This episode is brought to you by Anchor FM. If you've ever thought about launching your own podcast or looking for a new host for your current podcast, there's no better way or time than now. Anchor FM is the best podcast host and it's completely free. Not only does Anchor not cost you anything, but you can monetize your podcast from the very start with no minimum listener base. All you got to do is go to anchor.fm to get started or download their free app. You can also record straight from the app and post it. It's got tons of features and functionality in the app where you can add background music and you can add your art for your podcast and all kinds of cool stuff. I highly recommend Anchor FM. So get started today with Anchor.fm. As you can hear the chants from the, the crowd. Let's go, Brandon. I feel the minutes count down on the clock again. Feel like I'm playing in a game that I can never win. Time is running out, I know I gotta make a choice. So many whispers in my ear that I can't hear my voice. Tell me, will it in the situation that I'm in? Or am I bound to sit alone, drowning in my sins? Get right or get left, what will it be? Time is running out, the blood is flowing down the streets. What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Loot Bros Podcast. I'm your host, Resident Daryl, and with me this week, I got No Show Joe. Yo, it's part time Joe. Get it oh, right. That's right. P- PT Joe. I got that part time Joe. All right. And then we have the Grounded Gamer, the Guinness World Record Holder. Question mark? Uh, well, well, yeah. Well, at this point, uh, successfully attempted Guinness World Record holder. Okay. I mean, that's not the way I, I'm. Until I see the certificates yet? in my hand. Gotcha, but then, yeah. Gotcha. All right. So we got Corey. What's up, brother? Not much. I mean, it's been. Uh, I I I I didn't think I was going to be so wiped out after doing the world record. I thought I was going to be like, oh yeah, it's nothing. You know, I'm going to recover from this. And I kid you not. I've been able to play games like it took me about two days of not playing games to recover from that. But like just to get to the point of being able to just even think properly or uh, do things on the daily properly and even podcast properly, it's it's taken me quite a long time. And it's nice to um, I, I mean, for people that have been following, I've you know started uh, doing some shows with the dual screens podcast. We're getting a lot of content going over there. So um, you guys can come check me out and everybody else out there. But yeah, it's been crazy. So I'm finally awesome. getting back into it and getting it all started again. So it's nice. Awesome, to awesome, again. man. Well, I'm glad that it all worked out for you. I'm glad you didn't die attempting this. Um, I will say I'm very disappointed at some of the comments that were in the threads of like the the news reports. You know, like, <laughs> yeah. some of the stuff people were saying were like, I mean, God, dog, man. Like I know people on the internet are douchebags. Jeez, and they're like, this basement dweller doesn't have a girlfriend, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, the dude's wife's right there with him helping him doing this. Like, well, Oh, yeah, no, it freaking. was I it was quite funny. Like, all I could do was it was it was hilarious because um, and, and it, it comes to that point, right, where it, it's it's I want to call it almost the Logan Paul effect, where yeah. the thing is, is bad publicity almost sadly in this day and age helps you out more than positive publicity because that article was the most viewed article for two weeks straight on that on on the news then when i did the first interview and that's awesome i had something like i did the first article and it was one of those things where like oh yeah we'll come and do a picture you know we'll we'll it might be in the paper it might not you know we don't know it depends on how much like it how big it is and all this all of a sudden like they do it online and they're like yeah we're printing this tomorrow and then i got three phone calls from that before i even did the record going we want you to do another interview for us i had like the ctv which is like canadian television like they phone me up for the area and they're like yeah for all of vancouver island like we want to do a full-on interview and do a full tv thing so i was like i had a tv like five seconds i think it was like a 30 second sizzle reel on tv like it was and then after i finished it i was on uh i I had to do follow-up interviews with both people and then i did a a couple radio shows so like it was it was crazy to see that with that even though it was negative everyone was just like yeah we need to talk to you because you know here's the like it's 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 just because it was big and and 
it, whatever people want to say, that's fine. And like, I, I mean, that's the big thing is that, you know, if you're going to go on the internet and put yourself out there anyway, especially tempting something like this, you just have to get used to the idea that, you know, people are going to say things about you and you just, you know, let it go over the shoulder. And then like, you know, it's neat. I actually met up with a guy from it though, but that defended me. That's and dope. he's actually just uh, north of me and he's a huge zombie player. And so like uh, he streams all the time and all that. And it was funny because everyone's doing all these things. And then he comes out and he's like, yeah, so just to put it out there, like I haven't worked in a year because I did one tournament. <laughs> That's awesome. And he's like, and I'm not doing big tournaments. Like I'm not like the the number one, like, you know, going to these big esports. He's like, I did one tournament, you know, want enough money to not have to work for a year. That's he's awesome. like, I'm just taking a year long vacation. And it's like, so they, this makes money. This guy is not just blowing smoke out of his butt. And I'm like, so it was nice. It was definitely exciting for sure. But that's, that's, that's the way the world works. And you know what? Just let it roll off my back. That's all I can do. Sweet, sweet, sweet. Well, that's awesome. Well, I am so glad you joined us tonight, Joe. I'm glad you made it. Um, this is going to be an exciting show. So before we get into it, let's get some toasts out of the way. We got a lot to toast to tonight. As per usual, Loot Bros Podcast, we like to toast to something positive, something entertaining, something awesome uh, in the industry, in the community. And so for starters, we're going to toast our Patreon producers. My name is Mayo, NZ Nitro, and CJ, the greatest Sony pony of them all. We also kind of (laughs) want to crack one open for CJ and say goodbye and farewell for now. So CJ is, he is on the run from the Australian government. Is trying. He has been violating his curfew, his mask mandates. Uh, he, he said the only shots he's taken are in the bar. And then now, <laughs> <laughs> did he eat a dingo? That's what I heard. I, th- I think he fought a dingo. Oh, he fought one. Oh, yeah. that's even worse. Or maybe, he, or maybe he made uh, a kangaroo eat his dingo. I don't know. I don't know. Things are so weird in Australia. Uh, so, so yeah. So CJ's on the run. I, I'm pretty positive he'll be on the run. For the rest of 2021, who knows what 2022 looks like? Uh, we will leave the seat open for you whenever you're ready to come back. Um, with that being said, we had a bunch of other really cool things happen this week. So, for starters, okay, so the GTA Remaster Trilogy has been announced. Which Let's been, go. Dude, I, I have those games. I bought the PS2 to PS4 versions with trophies. And, like... I've played some of them. They're good, but like a remaster version, that's just got me. Man, I want, I want it. I want to play that real bad. All right, then the freaking Resident Evil Welcome to Raccoon trailer oh came out. Oh my gosh, so good! That thing is loaded with Easter eggs ripped straight out of the game. Like I feel filled- my phone is full of just screenshots. I'm like, oh my god, look at that! Oh my god, Dude, look at that! <laughs> all I did was think of you when I watched it. I was like, I wonder what Daryl thinks of this because I think this is absolutely phenomenal. That the fact that <laughs> they're doing. The first two games in one movie. Yes, yes. Because they're doing it simultaneously, like they actually take place, which yeah. is cool. Yes. Yeah, which is crazy. There's even, there was even some Code Veronica references in there. Yeah, I saw those too. The, 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 the real, you know, the film reel with, for the Ashford twins. Um, and then, so, and the last thing, you know, in typical Loot Bros fashion, I, I want to say, I want to pour one out for, uh, for Tricky Mick. Now, here on this show, the Loot Bros and the Trophy Horse, we go back and forth. We are we are good friends, IRL, um, but we like to throw a little shade and talk a little trash back and forth. Um, and usually we we bag on Tricky pretty hard because he deserves it. He's a bit of a turd. Um, so Tricky <laughs> had a death in the family, so I'm gonna throw a little toast out his way. So we really hate that for your brother, and we hope that you know you're doing well through all this as well as you can. Um, outside of that. I have not, and I will not stop destroying you <laughs> in trophy count and in platinums. So, like, I do feel really bad for the situation you're in, but I don't feel bad enough to stop busting all these <laughs> freaking platinums. That's some Cobra Kai shit right there. <laughs> no mercy. Busting all kinds of plats. I got nothing to toast to today. So that was for the patrons. That one was for Resident Evil. That one's for GTA. That one's for Tricky and his Wimpy Platinum Count. And that one's for Let's Go Brandon. <laughs> All right. <laughs> what, what, what was your uh, What was your guys' take on the on the GTA trailer? Like, I was I was like, wow! Like they finally announced it, and I heard the rumor is it drops this month. 
Dude. Like it's just coming out this month. Like it's I not, think that I think the month. anniversary is like in two weeks. I think. Yeah, it's for, the, for the twentieth or whatever. Yeah, twenty fifth. I think right. Yes. Yes. All, all I can think when I saw the trailer was just before that because there was leaks that this was coming, and the thing I watched this meme and it's a guy that has a cup in front of him and one cup says like he's like GTA Online and the other cup says GTA Six and it's like then the the, the the jug he's holding is like filled with water and it's like amount of hours or to work on or whatever the money and putting money into things. And it's like, just pours, you know, all this GTA line and he thinks about the GTA say, ah, no, pour some more on GTA line goes to think about <laughs> six fills up the entire cup of GTA online. And then he goes to pour the six and then he pulls out this other cup slaps it beside it. And it says GTA trilogy remake. And then he just pours the rest of the water. And it just <laughs> GTA's, the cups empty. And I'm like, that's pretty much, that's what um, happened. <laughs> what happened, and um, that's all I can think about. I was never one that played the old GTA's uh, on the PS2. Even when it came to the newer ones, I still am not a. They, they control a like crap, so the, it's, it's just hard. even the regular GTA's. I like the, the four and five. Never, I'll, I'll be honest. Never put more than I probably maybe put less than six hours between them both, and it's not. It's just GTA to me. I don't know. It's just never been my my cup of tea. I love Red Dead, um, but it's just there's nothing. I, I like to have those little bit of like fantasy experiences and GTA is just doesn't provide that. Like it's not enough of a story to go like, oh, this is so far stretched that this would actually happen kind of idea. So maybe I'll have to. Maybe well, I'll have to do it now. I, I highly recommend them. Um, now, granted, they are a product of their time. So. We'll do uh, some GTA themed shows soon. I, I got some big ideas for that. Uh, the conversations we could have are freaking hilarious. All of them will uh, revolve around picking up hookers and then killing them and getting your money back. <laughs> <Jesus>. <laughs> That's basically everyone's G- first GTA story in a nutshell. Yeah. But, uh, th- dude, oh my gosh, so much fun. So much fun. So I'm excited about it. They will have my money day one. I might buy it twice. And I've already I'll bought buy, it once on I'll PS4. Buy, I'll buy it three times. Let's do so this. So I might buy it for PS4, and then I might buy it again. I'm definitely buying them on the Switch, like day one, because oh I'm just excited to actually play a GTA game on a Switch. Okay, so I will buy them there too, even though I probably won't play them there, but just to have them. Like I just went on vacation and <laughs> took my Switch, charged it up, and left it on the charge for two days in the hotel, never turned it on one time. Played my Vita whenever I was home or in the hotel room. <laughs> but I brought it. So Beat that's Island. what I do. Beat Island is the place I'll, to I'll take you with me. I'll take you with me. So, all right, guys, let's get into a little bit, a little bit more housekeeping. I know we shout out our patrons. Just kind of want to get, get kind of put it out there real fast. Uh, we do have a Patreon, just like every other freaking podcast under the sun. The difference is ours is actually really freaking good. There's tons of awesome content on there. There's extra shows, um, different tiers, fun tiers. Not tears that suck like everyone else's Patreon. So if you're listening to this and you are subscribing to some other podcast Patreon, do yourself a favor, cancel that trash, go hop onto the Loot Bros Patreon. It is the only Patreon that actually matters. So you're saying you don't need tricky thoughts. You, <laughs> there's only one episode on there. <laughs> I tell you what, I tell you what, I'll do if, if, if I, I want to hear some feedback from the patrons. But if the, if the patrons want it, I'll start another tier for Tricky Thoughts, and you'll actually get content then. Because whenever I'm in charge of it, the, it happens. All right, and you let somebody else be in charge of it. Eh, Still to be Tricky it. Thoughts without Tricky. I'll bring Tricky on. I'll, oh, okay. I'll, we'll, we'll do. We'll do. Uh, well, what about if it was an impression show of where you did the <laughs> thoughts of what <laughs> Tricky <laughs> thought? That that's that, that's the it's purpose inception. of the show. It's tricky it's Tricky Thoughts is. Me your thoughts on what tricky would tricky. say ah, right so then it's still better. tricky thoughts that's a tricky, a tricky situation yeah 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 there I, mean, you go. I, I would listen to that you could just call it tricky situation there you go that way we don't get you yeah. yeah we had to spell it wrong too two k's instead of seven ck <laughs> <laughs> upside down why it's like corn <laughs> it's a backwards why oh no no we can do backwards R. that's cool too so yeah so yeah what are the uh, tricky situations and that's what the patrons want so we got or some you great- could call it, or you could do it like because it's tricky Mick. You could do Mick Tricky, like like there a chicken sandwich, chicken like sandwich. Mick Tricky, Mick, Mick Tricky, tricky. Mick tricky. Yeah. <laughs> it's the spicy spice chicken it's nugget. Spi- <laughs> it's the deadly spicy chicken nugget. <laughs> <laughs> 
Uh, CJ, we do this because we love you. We're doing this to make you laugh in this time where you need a good pick me up or a swift. It's like you need to pick up that new McTricky sandwich. Uh, there you go. Uh, you need to pick you up your platinum cow, bro. That, that, that is that is true. That is true. It's a hot stuff. You can give me a proper snog on the show. Snog. Man, she's been watching that Australian trash. <laughs> right? No. Oh and the camera's on too. Look, no, it's right not. There. The wire. No. Love you. you gonna let me hit that tonight? Nope, I'm going to bed. Uh, wow! Were you trying to do that? You were you trying to do that TikTok meme there, Daryl? Where you you got the guy he's like looking to pay the bill, and he's like, "It's the funniest thing I've ever seen." And and I don't know if you've seen it, where the guy's sitting there with the bill, and then he's like, "He's like, you're gonna let me hit that?" And then she says no, and he pushes the split bill button. <laughs> Oh my gosh, dude, that's funny. I've never seen that, but that's really funny. And then she's like, no, she's like, yeah, you can do that. Oh, and he's like, okay. And then he like pays in full. Like, it's just. <laughs> that's terrible. And then so every one of his TikToks, that's all it is, is just him and his, <laughs> and they're eating somewhere and he's like asking different ways if, if he can hit it. And then he's like, split or pay. And he's like, dude, oh, that's great. That's really funny. That's really funny. That sounds like some junk me and my wife would do. We have, I got, I got to give a shout out. We're, we're approaching 20 years together. Holy cow. Yeah, what okay. is today? Today's the 8th. As the, We're recording on the 8th. On the 19th, that'll be mine and my wife's 20 years together, 14 years married. And, nice. Yeah, and half of our conversations are just, I'd probably say 75% of our conversations are like trash talk to each other of some form. And uh, and we're, it's, it's funny. She's got a really good sense of humor. And uh, <laughs> so we have, a, we have a good time. And uh, anytime she gets near me while I'm near a microphone, I always tell her the camera's on. One of these days, because she's doing some, she's she's doing very funny things in the background usually. So, one of these days, I'm gonna catch her with a camera on, and then I'm a blackmail her. There you go. There. All right. All so, that all that blackmail money. Um, that you share. I've been saying for the past couple of weeks now that um, middle to the end of October, some of these other podcasts that I have are going to be coming back and I'm going to start streaming. Joe and I have been kicking around the idea of doing some, uh, being like dual streaming semen demons and getting together and doing some shows and doing some <laughs> streaming <laughs> semen demons. <laughs> what, man? What? Dual du- streams. And we're going to be doing <laughs> playing some games online and stuff. Hopefully, like, you know, are you going to be doing this on Twitch? Are you going to be streaming this on Pornhub? <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. No, we got to. We already ordered our little blow up hot tubs. First of all, we're Red Tube exclusive. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> Lord. Hey, man. You, you got to go where the money's at. You know what I'm saying? So Only fans. Gotcha. There you go. So, uh, so yeah, we're going to be doing some some dual streams. And uh, and so we got, we got a bunch of stuff coming. So I've been saying for a while, Comic Cash two two three six, all that stuff streams that is coming. So October seventeenth is when those things start. So I'm pretty stoked about it. A lot of I got a lot of good stuff planned. I've been knocking out some games, kind of getting prepped, doing some reading, uh, practicing my stand up comedy. So we are moving right along with the extra content. So. Corey, since you are yeah. the guest, why don't you start us off with what you've been playing? Well, I mean, it's the beginning of the month, and we all know what that means. Uh, PS Plus games came out. Oh, I thought you uh, so, I thought it was uh, food stamp money and all that stuff. Oh, it's the favorite. It's the best Tuesday of the, of the month. <laughs> That's right. I'm going to get my lobster and my Marlboro. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> no, so it's the first Tuesday of every month. And so PlayStation Plus always releases the good old three games. And uh, this month, I mean, it's a little interesting that they already gave us Mortal Kombat uh, X when we you know, already had that in the instant <laughs> PS Plus collection. I so know. I've already played that before and Hell Let Loose. And then we had uh, 2K21. Now, Hell Let Loose. I tried it. I like World War II shooters, but this is very much like if anyone's ever played. Uh, what is it? If you've ever played, I'm trying to remember the like Arma, like the old like super simulation war shooters. That's exactly what this is. And for me, I can't do it. I'm sorry. I tried. I'm like, this is cool, but I'm, I'm I can't do it where all I have is a compass in front of me, and then I'm walking like two minutes to just go into a battle and then I hope that I don't die and it's just everyone standing kind of hunkered down and hope shooting across and 
I can't do it. I, I can't. It just it just doesn't work for me. I tried. But 2K21 golf, I mean, maybe I'm a little bit of a nerd that way, but I do like me some 2K21. And I can tell you right now, I'm having a lot of fun playing it. It's probably one of it brings me back to the good old PGA Tiger Woods gaze of where the golf games were good. And um, I'm really enjoying that. And the idea that I can custom make a course where I can I'm going to put a a lot of people already have it, but put a giant platform 400 feet in the air and then try to hit a little tiny green that's just on the bottom. It's going to be fantastic. Um, other than that, uh, as you Joe make a golf has, course in the shape of a penis. I mean, there probably already is one. Oh, okay. I mean, not that I would do that, but I just was curious. I mean, who, who knows? Like, who knows what I can do? I Maybe can do you, can, uh, you can have the green say, let's go, Brandon. I mean, I, 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 that, that's the best part. I bet you they're, they're who knows? Because now it's free. Who <laughs> that's, knows what gets created, right? right? That, that's the best thing about free games is that for games like this, you're going to have people probably just come in just to make courses. And they're going to make meme courses and everything because it's free. Whereas, you know, when you get this game and it's people that actually pay money for it, they try to make somewhat serious courses where that's not going to happen this time around. So the other thing I've played, as Joe has known, I have not been on my PlayStation this last week and a bit. And and I know it sounds crazy. And it's because my buddies and me got addicted to that thing called uh, New World. Now. I'm going to put myself out there and I'm going to say that the first however many hours was good. It, it's new world to me. I'm going to be honest with people. This game is like takes all the bests of every game you've ever played. Takes 80% of it, puts it in the game. And then that's it. And it wants to be so good, and I just played it. Like, I put 70 hours into this game in less than a week. So I really played it. I, I It's not like I'm just blowing smoke up my butthole here. That's gross. Don't blow smoke up your butt. Not there's anything wrong with that. <laughs> but <laughs> when it comes into it, it's the idea that there was just... There's just so many things like you can craft, but then because it takes so much of a level to craft things, you just gr- you're better just to grind gear instead of crafting. So crafting becomes useless. They give you s- such less experience doing anything in the game that doing s- collection missions for the town gives you the most amount of experience. So everyone's just sitting in town, wasting all their money buying things. You get a house, but you can't do anything with it. You can make clans, but there's no benefit to it. There's all these things are just they're just not there it's not 100 percent there like there's people that are hitting level 60 right now trying to play the end game and there's a there is no way to unlock the last missions because the game doesn't give you the items you need to do it and everyone's like i'm here i've done everything but you're not letting me play the end of your game like it's just i want it to be good but it's not. <laughs> and I and I, I, I want it to be better. And even though they've sold so many copies and they've done so well, the idea that like sh- Twitch streamers are having their computers explode from trying to play this because it's not optimized properly. And the idea that it's just the, the, the way the game is built just doesn't play well to casuals and things like that. The idea that they were having... 5,000 queues for servers and that was ruining things like there's just too many things that makes it bad but the exact same time is it's just it was a good until I had to grind and then the <laughs> grind is just way too hard but other than that that's, that's what I've been said. playing Whoa. I've been literally she also said trophy let's go Brandon <laughs> Yeah, but that that's it. So, I mean, that's it for me. New World uh, 2K21 Golf. And, uh, oh, I did try the, before we got onto this call here, I did play the Battlefield 2042 open beta. And I can say with all confidence, this game is not ready to release in a month. <laughs> I keep seeing that. 
I, I, I am playing the game, like the idea that this is a month away from release. I'm having screen tearing on my PS5, which, you know, understandable. Like, you know, if I was playing, it's like the cyberpunk problem. Playing cyberpunk on a PS5, I never really had a lot of the graphical issues that a PS4 had. But I'm playing on a PS5. I'm having screen tearing. I'm having my black background disappear. I'm having my screen flicker. I can't change. Like, I can hold a, like a, 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 what is it, a dual scope? So, like, where it's an AUG with a red dot. And I can't switch between the two because it glitches out. It did it, like, once or twice, and then it stopped working. The animations for rig dolling do- doesn't work. I'm having it where there's tanks, and they look like they're, like, they look like Minecraft and someone running in Minecraft when things are going. And there is just the the hit detection is terrible. The, it just doesn't look like it's working. I, there's no map button, which blows my mind. There's a mini map, but I can't open the map mid game. There's like the classes are specialist classes, but they're not specialist classes. There's just so many things they need to fix. And the idea that the core gameplay is just not even there not minus all the other crap just the core gameplay is is broken to play to me goes like you could have just taken battlefield 4 reskinned it made it hd added some feature futuristic features called it a day there you go people would have loved this game and i don't know where they screwed up in moving this over like and it's just not playing right and the idea too that they did the silliest thing where they decided to make a two day pre order beta and then do a one single day open beta where everyone can join makes no sense to me. I know you want people to buy your game and pre order it, but giving it so you can only slam your servers for one single day and then you're having it where when you look at the difference of PS, like it's really weird because PS5, PC, and Xbox Series X people are all playing together. Then your Xbox One, your PS4 Pro, and your PS4, and your Xbox One X are also, they're all playing on their own servers. So one server's slapped down with 128 game, 128 player games, and the other one's with 64 player games. So it's like I can't go into a 64 player server because, because it won't let me because I have a PS5. So I can't tell the difference between the, the modes. I can't tell if it's the the amount of people in the game that's causing the issue. I can't tell if it's the frame rate issues that I'm having. I can't tell like there's no graphical settings to change anything. Like there's there's nothing. Like this is so bare bone that I just don't get it. Like you've been working on this since you finished five. Yeah, yeah. Or even since maybe since you finished one. I don't know, but like fix your shit, EA. Like, we're we're tired. Like, I know we give shit to Call of Duty, but, like, the idea that Call of Duty can pump a game every year out and still be better than you working on it for three friggin' years? Hey, man. Shit. They, they, they botched... Every, ga- every game DICE has put out recently has been, it's just uh, been, has been broken in the beginning. Oh, and, it's and just... I'm tired. People are still buying them, so they're just gonna keep doing That's it. That's the worst part. It's, it's... I had this conversation with my buddy today, and New World was the same problem, is... People right now are, and especially with the, the, basically what's ended up happening nowadays is people are so wanting to be part of that first experience, to have their opinion listened to, and like I say, I'm guilty of it. I bought New World, actually technically I got my brother to buy it for me. Thank God. Um, got him. The, the whole thing is, is it's everybody wants to be part of that new experience and that first experience. And everyone's just willing to like, let the developer go, okay, yeah, you know what? It's okay. That we're having these games now release that are just not finished. And like, they're playing the early access thing without playing the early access thing. You know what? If, if new world wanted to charge $30 for what they released and say, Hey, we're working on it. We're fixing it. Like, this is the thing, or if maybe Prime members could try this out first for X amount of time, like, do that. Like, just do another beta. I know you've been working on it forever, but, like, you look at the team that developed this, they've never made an MMO in their life. They made the Green Lantern for for, for PS2, or for PS3, I think it was. Like, this team has not made 
that good of games and then they're giving them this huge project and it's like you could see it that one guy came up and he's like hey let's make campfires because they did that in dark souls cool done oh hey let's build a crafting system because they did that in Valhalla and everyone liked that cool done like do, do we want to finish that no let's only make no mounts and the idea that the response they had today the reason why they have no mounts well at the time that they were had made guns like this is their this is their ideology and i don't i don't like if you look into history they said well at the time when muskets were first designed and all this stuff they haven't been on the island long enough to domesticate the animals that are there and there's no animals to domesticate that you could ride i'm like so because you guys decided to only add five different types of animals you have rabbits turkeys wolves lynxes cougars an elk that's it oh goats sorry i'm sorry goats and sheep whatever they're the same goddamn thing that's it seven different types of animal you can't tell me that the whole reason why your your story mode of doing this is because you didn't couldn't domesticate an animal to ride them i'm like come Sounds on like, like you are thoroughly enjoying your time with that game no i mean i that's would like to say right there <laughs> well, no, the, the the real PETA shit is in the news, which we can probably bring up later. But that's hilarious. But that's oh. it for me. I'm I'm done. That's it. I've, I've <laughs> said my piece. That's a, that's a way I to can, start the show I, off. With a I nice could literally rant. go on for another hour about how modern games right now. And then, like I said, same thing with I, I bet you right now I'm going to after I'm done this video, I can pop on YouTube and I can watch an Angry Joe video about him. Just going the good old Angry Joe just fucking comes on. First thing he says is. You fucked it up! And he's just going to come in, and then it's just going to be this video about him talking about all the issues, and they, they need to fix their shit, just like they need to fix Madden, and I'm just tired. I'm just tired of where we're getting these games, where it's just, hey, you man, know what? People stop buying them. Just, They'll stop just, coming out. Buddy. I know. Just, just stop. Please. It should, be, it should just be every time we get on shows. We should make a commitment, right, guys? All right, starting here on the Loot Bros. Every time a game's broke on, on release... You know, or a game's broke, I guess, early in because we don't always buy all the new games. You know, it's like, hey, it's broken. Don't play it right now. Like, and that should just be our stance. Don't give the games any time of day until the games aren't broken anymore. Like, yeah. I've got a game is made by an indie studio, uh, but I really, really dug it. And uh, it was freaking Song of Horror. And the um, the PC version was, you know, was working good, but the PlayStation version had a bug in it. And I just refused to finish playing it. And I reached out to the devs. I was like, hey, your game's broke. And they're like, yeah, we'll let you know when it's patched. They reached out to me when it was patched. And that's cool. But now I've already moved on. I haven't, I haven't touched it. So like, people need, we just need to let people know, it's like, hey, your game's broke. Don't play it until it's not broke anymore. Yeah. So or, or in some cases, like maybe certain companies just don't release it. Maybe that's, why yeah, zombie ate my, it. maybe that's why Zombie Ate My Neighbors never came to PlayStation. Right, Joe? <laughs> it's still broken. Fucking bullshit. Yeah, it's still broke. Uh, speaking <laughs> of, let's go, Brandon. What's going on, Joe? What are you playing? A lot of stuff. Um, so, for instance, right now, I'm playing Final Fantasy VIII for remastered for PlayStation 4, Good. which is nice that we got that on PlayStation now because it's the only Final Fantasy I don't like own on PlayStation. I own them all on the Switch. It's funny. I own them all on the Switch except for 7, and I own them all on the PS4 except for 8. There so, like, eventually I'll buy them, but I just don't own them right now. I think Final Fantasy, all the like really good Final Fantasies, you can play all of them on PS4 and Switch now, except for 13. Can't play 13. I like 13. Everyone else can fuck off. I'll die on that hill. Hey, man. I've died on a lot of hills. <laughs> so, yeah, I ain't gonna judge So, Final Fantasy 8 is a really, really good Final Fantasy. I like the story a lot. A lot of people complain because of the way the mechanics work in that game, where you can't really like power level like you can in most RPGs because if you because everything levels with you, so like you'll fuck yourself in the end. So like you have to just kind of just go through the game and not power level because if you power level, you're fucked. You're just fucked. This makes the game so much harder. That's what I, I did. Yeah, yeah I that's what myself. I did the first time I played it too because I didn't know. And knowing how to battle, G I Joe. There you go. Um, what else did I play? I have played a lot of stuff, like a lot of stuff this week. I. I beat a few games too. Uh, I beat Man Eater on PS5. It's a good game. Uh, it was even better on PS5, dude. I started on PS5 just to kind of get a feel for it. Oh my, those, dude, those it's, haptics. Yeah, man, 
it's pretty dope on PS5. I was like, oh man, this is this is dope. Like this is different. It feels different. It plays a little. It I mean, obviously it plays the same. It's the same damn game. But I, I feel like it's just a better experience on PS5. It just runs smoother. Oh, you don't man, have the choppiness runs, of the PS4. Yeah, room. it runs so much smoother. But it, that's such a freaking good game, man. Like if you guys don't own Man Eater, you owe it to yourself to pick up Man Eater. I mean, everybody should have Man Eater if they're smart enough and claimed it for PS. I was say, yeah, you got the PS PlayStation Plus, Plus, baby. And they gave you the free one, I think, with it with PlayStation Plus, right? Because that's back when they, they didn't. They gave you the PS5 version. Yeah. Was it, was yeah, it only the PS5 the... version? I thought, yeah. I, thought, I thought it was PS4 and PS5. I mean, it's possible. I, got, I bought it off day one. On I PS4. bought it too. I bought it too. So I, I own a physical copy of it. I mean, see, my thing is, I, on the PlayStation side, I don't mind buying my games. I like owning my stuff. So do I. Wait, watch um, out! The the Nintendo, the Xbox Game Pass Kool Aid guys are busting through the wall. Come out for us! Right, bust out the wall, paying for games. <laughs> Best meme I ever saw. <laughs> it's pretty funny. Have you seen that one, Daryl? Oh yeah, it's so funny. Jeez, I just hit my knuckles on the friggin' desk. That sucked. Anyways, what else you been playing, Joe? Um, other than that, I played Resident Evil 2 Remastered. <laughs> and I beat it. And Dang. that game is absolutely gorgeous. It really is. It really like, is. and it plays so smooth. Oh, it's like butter, man. Controls one, four, two, three. Yep. It's really good. It's really good. I really wish that they hadn't have taken some liberties with the story. Yeah, that kind of pissed me off too, because it was all over the place, and I was like. Wait, what are we doing now? Because that's not what happens next. <laughs> I was like, "What?" And th- and they they really killed the relationship between Leon and Claire. Like the whole reason, like everything that makes you want to save her and makes her important in your in your life. I guess it was the best way. Yeah, that. they kind of they concentrate way too much on the relationship with Ada. Yep. And Leon. Yep. But uh, it was still good. I mean, it was it was a, a eight out of ten in my opinion, whereas the original is a ten out of ten. I would say it's a 7 out of 10, and that's my favorite Resident Evil of all time. Yeah, mine too. That's my favorite game of all time. And that was what was so hard about it is because all I have wanted since 2001 was a Resident Evil 2 remake. And finally got it, and it was really good, but it just had like some shortcomings. And I was a little frustrated because they made the enemies mega bullet sponges. Uh, the game is so gorgeous, but yet Mr. X never leaves you to freak alone. So you can't enjoy anything. It's like- yeah, that's yeah, that's definitely one of my points that I made. I think when I when we recorded the podcast the last time, I said I said I mentioned that Mr. X is a bully. Yeah. You said that when you were doing it because you you played that game for Extra Life, didn't you? And that's the reason why you stopped playing it for Extra Life last time was because yeah, I was X playing that for Extra Life yeah, last year. Yeah, Mr. Mr. I remember, and I'm like, you're like, I, I can't play this game right now. I'm getting too stressed. And I'm like, why? And he's like, Mr. X won't leave me the fuck alone. Dude, Mr. He X won't. is on my ass. He's he like, X won't give it to you all the time. Yeah. He like, everywhere. It's a huge DMX fan, apparently. Yep. He's, he's, yeah. <laughs> Look where that got him. Damn. Yeah. Nowhere. <laughs> but I, I thought, I thought like the end of the game was well put together. I felt the lab section was like lacking compared to the original lab section. I don't know, Daryl, I don't know if you felt the same way. You know, I thought it was fine. I mean, I thought that it made sense the way it was. I thought that the G mutations were still really good. Um, you, you, nothing's going to beat the original. Like the original no. was so, so good. And so, I felt like this time playing it, I didn't have to go back and play the other half of it because I just didn't care enough <laughs> well they're they didn't really do another half like it's the same game the yeah only, I know. The is, yeah. there's only two sections that are different if you play through as leon you go through kendo kendo's gun shop with ada if you play through as claire you go to a um like a not a nursery but like a daycare center now it, that stuff's really cool because that's technically new content and it gives you it kind of fleshes out like some of the more nefarious things going on in in, uh, in Raccoon City, and that was really cool. And so, like, it scores big f- with me for that, adding to the lore, opposed to some of the things where it took away. Um, but overall, it was it's it's really good. It's I mean, it's it's exceptionally good. I have multiple copies of it. <laughs> <laughs> 
I got I got two copies of the PS4 version still in the wrapper. You have problems. <laughs> <laughs> I got the Xbox version in the wrapper. No, 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 that one's open. I let my brother borrow it. Mother. I was like, yeah, didn't you let your brother borrow one that he like never played? Yeah, 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 yeah. He played it though. He was good eventually. So, but yeah. Right, this is such a good game though and i i do have i do have the same complaint as you do with the bullet sponging though it's ridiculous it's absolutely ridiculous it makes it not it makes it not fun to shoot anything it's just like no it's not enjoyable like i just ran past shit because yeah. i was like uh, i'm tired of shooting things because they're just wasting all my bullets yeah but i actually mean. need the bullets to kill something i don't have any what's so I, cr- what's crazy is the amount of detail into the gore in that game like my shots are gorgeous oh my gosh dude it is so good it's ridiculous. Like it is, it, it don't make no sense to be that good. Like that scene when the top half of the zombie's head falls off in the in the <laughs> freaking uh, hallway. The liquors were awesome oh, in this. Yeah. Oh yeah, they were. They were. They're so, so gory cool. and bloody. And the only time, the only like difficult section I thought in the game was the section e- either the section where like you get all the liquors coming after you in the lab because they like they all gang up on you in like one corridor. Like once yep. you're trying to get the uh, open the cryo freeze area. So you can drop the temperature and then put it in the and then kill uh, the plant forty three. Yep. Oh, the game is so good. Yeah. I want to play it again. I'll play it again. I think I want. I think I want to not go for the platinum, but I definitely, I definitely want to fifty percent this one, or or yeah. at least get more of the trophies in it. Yep. I'll probably go play through as Claire eventually. I just want to go back and beat some other stuff first. Yep. I want to really I wanna on this train of. I want to platinum that one and Resident Evil Three Remake. I really do, but I get frustrated with them. Three Remake is just bad. What? No. I don't like it. What? It's awesome. Uh, Topic of the show. Uh, <laughs> it's like I can't say any uh, slander about Resident Evil in this show. Daryl will come after me. So I, I, I look, man. I let, I let I'm talking to the guy that, that friggin' defends uh, Umbrella, Umbrella Corps. I have the platinum in that game. <laughs> I, I don't know how you did it. 89 hours, dude. 89 hours. You're never getting those hours back. It was so fun, though. Like it was. That was so much fun. Like that's wait, the difference wait. between my I don't have the platinum in Resident Evil Two remake, but I do have the one in Resident <laughs> Evil. Um, I mean, excuse me, Umbrella Core because Umbrella Core was fun and I, I had a good time. Whereas with Resident Evil Two, I get really aggravated and stressed out because Mister X all the time trying to give it to me. <laughs> Dude, he's so annoying. Just leave me the fuck alone. It's like, like I want to. Just... It's like he's trying to freaking. He's like a vaccination campaign. So oh my to god! Stop. To stop. <laughs> <laughs> just stop. I get it when I get it, all right? Get, just get off me. <laughs> uh, Don't put that hex on me, Ricky Bobby. Don't you dare right. put that hex on me. That's uh, right. My body, my choice. You leave me alone. Wow. Did you just put a my body, my choice in there? <laughs> <laughs> Kalai's not yeah, even on the right. episode. Uh, uh, oh, man. man. <laughs> what have you been playing? <laughs> So I played a little game called Daymare 1998. Amazing. Uh, it's not. <laughs> so, like, I like I don't like preface this. All right, it's not the best game in the world. It's not the worst game in the world. It's like it's like Goldilocks and the Three Bears and the Porridge. Like it's not too hot. It's not too cold. It's kind of just right. And it does a lot of things really well. Like it harkens back to those like Resident Evil Two days. Yo. And you can even play with like classic bum ass tank controls, which nope. I said, "Fuck that." <laughs> Did you play with them or no? No, that that actually that's why I haven't finished that game because the, I played it after I played. Okay, I'm real bad about playing a game that controls really well and then following it up with a game that's really janky and then not finishing. It's and just like, the buttons in that game were so like yeah, it's so. Dark. Okay, so I played that and then I went to play Resident Evil Two and I started using the Daymare controls while I was trying to play Resident Evil Two. I'm like, this shit's not working. This is not run. Where's the run button? <laughs> I'm like, who makes the run button R1? Damien. What is this? What is this? Uh, PlayStation? What is this? PlayStation 2? Tank. No, was it? There was another game that did it. I'm trying to remember. Just recently, I played a game that makes R1 the. the heck is it? I in can't that game, now. in that game, it's not intuitive though because everything. Like, if you play that game on PC, you're it shooting is it so bad in that game. It's smooth and fast and fluid, whereas on console, it's just stilted and a little. St- a little slow. Mm. It's it's definitely um it was definitely a game that was built for PC and then ported to console. And gotcha. yeah, yeah, yeah. it hurts. Like it just feels I mean 
Did I get my eleven dollars out of it from Best Buy? I did. One hundred percent I did. Like I'm glad I got on clearance. I wanted to play it really bad. I love survival horror like Daryl. Yeah. And I thought the game delivered as far as like gameplay wise. Like it was a fun game to play, Daryl. Yep. It was just such a pain in the ass because the checkpoint system is so fucking bad. It's like and they're like, okay, so Daryl, how far did you get? Okay, so you, you know, be- you know when you get in the lab and you have that doctor who's making you go all down all those crazy corridors. Oh my god! So you're still in day two. Okay, so I got past that part, and then I'm the black guy in the town. All right, so you're on chapter three. So you're yeah. about you're a little over halfway done with the game. All yeah. right, all right. So the game's split into two parts. You play as this guy named Raven and this guy named Sam. And then I don't know what the fuck else happened in that game. It's all over the place. Like, the plot's ridiculous. Yes. I'd stop caring after, like, chapter one, and I was like, I don't care. I'm just going to play the game. <laughs> the game put, gameplay's tight. Yeah. As far as, like, the gameplay goes, like, the shooting was janky, but not the worst. Right. Like, it made 13 look like the greatest. It made... Okay, so after playing this, like, 13 made Daymare look like a masterpiece. Like... Like I, I like, like I played it for fifteen minutes, and I was like, "Oh man, this is a certified Levi masterpiece right here." Yes, but That's I don't know. I, I don't know if I would recommend this to anybody though. Like I had fun with it, but unless you're getting it on the cheap, like well, do not play this game. Or it's not worth your money. You're, or if you're just a hardcore survival horror fan, you see, see, because that game started off as the unofficial Resident Evil Two remake, and Invader Wait, Studios. What? Okay, yeah. So let's so check it out. The company that made that Daymare 1998, they were a like a indie mod team, and they were remaking Resident Evil 2 third person over the shoulder in Unreal Engine. And what ended up happening was Capcom contacted them and asked them to take it down, and then flew them out to Japan and showed them the actual Resident Evil 2 remake. So mm. that team actually it was really, really cool because you know how like sometimes companies will be like, Hey, don't be making fan versions of our game. Take it down or we'll sue yeah, you. Yeah. So their story was that Capcom not only like took them like, and said, Hey, don't make that game, but here's why, but then took them under their wing a little bit and gave them pointers. And they turned Daymare or excuse me, they turned their game into Daymare. So gotcha. yeah. And it was, it was one of those, like it was one of those stories that, like, good guy Capcom, you know, it was like, this is awesome because that we what we got was we got two third person Resident Evil style games. That's why it's called Daymare 1998, and that's why it like takes place in 1998. It just it's got so much charm, and there's so many levels, like there's street scenes and things that are so Raccoon City, it's ridiculous. Yeah, it, it is a well put together game. It's just you're right; it does feel like it's it's running. It feels like it should be running on a PC and like all the model, the, the character models look like they're straight off a of PS2 or an Xbox 360. Yeah. Yep. They look really, really janky. Yeah, the facial animations are basically non existent. But it adds to the game, though. It adds to the charm of the. I, I don't know how I can put it. It adds Dude. to the charm of the game. It really does. Because, it's like a B movie. It's like a yeah, B horror like, movie. It, it's like playing. Um, uh, man, what the hell is that game? It's like Wishmaster 3. No. No. <laughs> Is it no. like playing, uh, what was that horror game they designed a couple of years ago where you worked in a... Charles Bronson's not going to show up in the middle. You're, you're a security guard. Uh, is it kind of like... Dude, Charlie Bronson wannabe? I'm trying to remember that game. I don't, uh, I don't know. I, like, like, from what it sounds like to me, like when you guys are describing this game, it sounds like it's the good old problem of small development team, yep. you know, just couldn't work all the problems out, and they're going to have a second game that comes out and probably yep. does a lot better than everything else. Yeah, I want Daymare 1999. I do. Uh, it's it's Daymare I mean, like, 1998 Sandcastle is what it's called. It's, it's coming out next year. Wait, they're really making a sequel? Yeah. Yeah, it's called Sandcastle. Yeah, so That's obviously. Sweet. I mean, the game ends in a cliffhanger, so. Don't tell me. I didn't finish it. I, I, I yeah, you got you got to finish it. I will, I will. The thing is, I was on my COVID quarantine and I was burning through games, and I played, um, okay, so I played freaking uh, Days Gone for forty hours, and then Onimusha, and then try, try to play Daymare. Like Onimusha plays like freaking butter. That game is still so good, and I, I tried to play Daymare after that, and it just was like, ah, I yeah. Didn't know. I mean, that's like any, like, oh, man, after playing Ghost and then trying to play any other, like, sword fighting game at all, 
it's just like, oh, it's just like I, I just wish the control. And that's the big thing, right? I think we've got to the point where the sad thing is, is um, games were so we've been kind of privileged, especially with last gen. Um, especially if you play PlayStation games, you've been privileged with playing good games. <laughs> so the whole thing is, is that when you when you have to play a crappy game um, or something that's not as polished, and the problem is, is that right away our mind goes to the factor of okay, uh, you know, this is the the not polished game, you know, and then we blame it on the game, and but then you learn about certain things like like Valheim is. I, I'm I'm still shocked that that game is made by three people in a basement, like. That game is got way too many mechanics to be good, as good it is it is with three people. And then you have like the, the the funny thing is though is that we're finally getting to the point though where these small development companies that are these these ten to fifteen people companies are coming out with better games than these like multi million dollar companies. And oh, yeah, you know it's just I think the thing is, and especially when it is eleven dollars, you know what? Put your money where your mouth is and just. Purchase it to f- support them later. And that's where I think that's the big thing to take away from it. It's like, okay, so 11, $12 for a game, brand new. Okay, it's got some bugs, whatever. I mean, what, 13 was a remastering of a game that was already made. It just had to be remodeled and it crashes like whatever and it's $50. So, you know, it, that's where it's like you could buy five day mirrors, mm-hmm. just buy one support them and then you know when the second one it's like my man look at my if it doesn't come to game pass i can't play it oh yeah the good how old, dare you that's that, don't worry we'll talk about that later good <laughs> i i'm i am so the amount of like Dude, Corey's oh, yeah. like charged up man he's like we're 55 oh. minutes into this recording and he's already had two rants like he is oh, ready I'm, i am ready i am ready to like just just give her i've been like sitting there like i said i haven't been on a podcast in a while and like every time i just see all these things peer up and i'm like oh, i can't wait to rant I'm like i just that. i just can't wait to talk about it and then the best part is it keeps on happening and then i'm just like oh, i'm just like it's just proving my point i'm like and and oh yeah okay but yeah continue. i just i'll, just, <laughs> I'll, I'll let everyone continue and then i'll just well, well when we get into the, the nitty-gritty he's gonna we'll, rant silently until it's his turn <laughs> yeah pretty much i'm just gonna go through i'm gonna start writing out my 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 essay over here what else you got joe i'm surely you got more than just those two so <laughs> in, instead of playing Hyrule warriors this week i actually played fire emblem warriors because i'm actually trying to finish stuff on the switch what Oh, I thought so, you were gonna. Say, I thought you were gonna say you played Breath of the Wild because you're like, if I can't play one Zelda game, I'll play another one. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I played. Um, so I played Fire Emblem Warriors. It, it's a game that came out on Switch. It's made by um, the same team that made all the other Dynasty Warriors games, so Mega Force and Koei. And it plays a little bit differently than the other ones, where it's like you you have to strategically like command your units to go to different bases and take them out versus like just trying to take one officer and like dominate the battlefield. You can't really do that in this one. You have to play strategically or you will die. So it's a little bit different the way this one works out. Um, I feel like the characters will all play differently because it's not really like a Dynasty Warriors clone. So it's not like most Dynasty Warriors like um, skinned games where they're just clones of like Lubu and clones of like, you know, Dung Joe and Cow Cow and all those characters. They're actually You're they're actually like words. their own characters. Yeah, Cow Cow, bro. My boy. <laughs> now, now Brown Cow. Now now Brown Cow. <laughs> Arsonist has oddly shaped feet. <laughs> the human torch was the night of Anklone. I don't believe you. I don't believe you. <laughs> Sorry, I ruined you. <laughs> Rick, you killed a man. You should, you should, you should, you should hang low. <laughs> Sex Panther. Sixty percent of the time, it works every time. <laughs> it works sixty percent of the time every time. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! Uh, Brick, did really you just tired. say I love lamp? Brick, do you really love lamp? <laughs> Loud noises. I don't know what we're yelling about. Ah, click like a. Oh wait, that's the other movie. Like Lars. Oh yeah. <laughs> It's <laughs> like a bag of sand. It's like a bag of sand. Come on, man. Come on, man. Anytime uh, my, I grab my wife's boob, 
With her consent, of course, uh, she says, what does it feel like? A bag of sand? <laughs> wow. Yeah. Wow. My wife's been making that joke since that movie, since we left the theaters. Damn. She really likes that movie, huh? She's, she's funny. It's good stuff. All right, hurry up, Joe. So, Name more games you play before I ruin this again. <laughs> so what the hell was I talking about? <laughs> Bags of sand and Kelly Clarkson. <laughs> Jesus, God. <laughs> So I played Fire Emblem Warriors. I have like two levels. I have like four or five levels left, and that'll be done. Um, I totally gave up on Call Your Shot because I feel like all the games that I picked, I'm never going to play. So. Just take the L, bro. Take the uh, L. I'm just going to drop out of the competition. <laughs> You're going to take the big L? <laughs> I'm going to take the biggest L. Oh my God. Um, I played Duke Nukem Forever last week. That's it's what Joe's last... used to taking is the big L. Don't worry. <laughs> yeah, the big D. The big D. The big D. The big D. I don't even know how that works. Big Duke Nukem? The Duke. The Duke. Yeah, I played the Duke a little bit last time we were recording. I beat like a third of it in one episode because our episodes are so fucking long. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's so fun. I mean, I beat. Um, did you remember when I collected like 80% of the collectibles in Spider Man? That one yep. show we recorded? Yes. Like, I had nothing collected. And Corey, I, I kid you not, Corey, I collected all the backpacks, all, every landmark except like one, and like beat like a third of the game. All in one recording. It's <laughs> <laughs> amazing. Yeah. So I played thirteen, and it was great. Fuck that game. So oh, man, I had to listen to this like Carball <sighs> rants. I had to listen to. I had to not only listen. Joe's like, "This is so bad, Corey. Let me use the superior power of the PlayStation Five to stream my, what I'm playing to you, so you can watch how bad this is." And the funny part was is because I'm obviously playing my own game. Joe's playing this so much that I'm just thinking Joe's dying <laughs> and then redoing the level over and over again. And nope. then I find out later, I watch him like, Joe, why are you like, why are you watching? Like, did you like, why are you restarting the match? Are you trying to like reload your stave? He's like, no, the game crashed. And I'm like, kid you not. It must have crashed in like the 15 minutes I was watching. Must have, it was like 30 minutes and he crashed eight times. And I, I laughed, laughed so hard because he would crash. And if Joe got far and wasn't sucking ass at the game, then he would die. <laughs> or if he didn't crash. And if he didn't get far, then he'd be dying just because the game was like glitched out. And I was like, oh, it was just. Well, I, I think that's so funniest. Bad, the funniest thing about that game, Daryl. So if you're holding like a weapon, right? And you die while like you either like have an item, like you either like open a door or you just suddenly get stuck in the animation. So like then you're. <laughs> So then you wind up holding your pistol sideways like you're a gangster, and then you can't undo it. You could shoot, but once you run out of bullets, you can't do anything else. And you're stuck like that. You have to totally like reset the game. And the save system is so effed in that game. So they did this thing where like you save at checkpoints, right? But no, 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 no. You don't save at the checkpoint. You have the opportunity to save at the checkpoint. And they don't tell you this. So it's like a faux <laughs> checkpoint. So it's like, oh, you can save if you want to. But what they don't tell you is even if you save in the checkpoint, it doesn't save fucking progress. You have to beat the whole level in one sitting. Hmm. This game is so janky. And I'm wondering if it's like the overpower of the PS5, which is causing all the crashing. Dude, that is a thing. There are games that it, the SD freaking hard drive. That's why I, I kid you not. That's why having an external definitely like i had cyberpunk crash and i had more crashes than my buddy and it was uh all because i was playing on my ssd yep, the game was I, like right here yeah anytime it tries to load something it's like oh we're gonna load oh god we're going too fast we went, <laughs> so, we went early <laughs> so, oh, we went early <laughs> you're not supposed to load that yet wait <laughs> well, I, I, well I think that's kind of i think that's kind of funny segue like I, got I was listening to like kind of funny the other day and they were saying they were talking about how like they were mad that there was 30 second load times in their games. And I was like, yo, really? Dude, those freaking bunch of vaginas would be mad about anything. Oh, yeah, I forgot you hate them because they're political stance. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> I hate them because they hate me for my political stance. That's right. Because they, <laughs> they, they look down on you because you have right. an inferior vision to what they want the world That's to right. be. Right. Well, I'm Canadian, so I'll just say sorry. It doesn't matter. <laughs> I'm sorry. Wow. <laughs> so you're just going to apologize for everything? Wow. I that mean, sounds familiar. Canadians do. 
That's what my prime familiar. minister does all the time. Oh, what do you mean? I took a vacation on a major holiday that we, the first of its kind, uh, and by accident, I feel bad that I did that. Sorry. <laughs> so. Oh, I overset the budget. Sorry. <laughs> oh. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, that's pretty much all I played this week. I mean, I played a lot. I felt like I got more accomplished this week than I wanted to. There you go. There you go. Next week's uh, all going to be Metroid Dread, though. No, I dread that. Get it. Got it. Got so, right. Daryl, what have you been playing? <laughs> what what so, did you play, Daryl? I have been running shop on some freaking spam. Some, uh, You've been trophy. rat trashing it up? Oh, King of the rats now? Dude, I've been hitting all the trash, but... I won't go into all the trash I've been playing. Did C- Did CJ lend you his uh his no. Rat King rat flute? No, nope. You can bring all the rats. <laughs> you can bring all the rats. Yeah. Should we start calling you Master Splinter or what? Not yet. Not yet. No. no. <laughs> so no, but since he has uh he, since he's in hiding from the Australian government, somebody had to take the mantle. So uh, I burnt through. I don't know. I'm at two hundred and eight. No, I'm at two hundred ninety platinums right now. I don't know what I was at last time. I'm sure I've gotten ten ish since the last time I was on the show. Um, I played a little bit of Metal Gear Solid Two on the Vita. Absolutely phenomenal game. Um, I played that while I was on vacation. Uh, and let's see before I get into the big stuff. Then I'm just kind of scrolling through. Right in, right in, right in. Snake. No. All right. I've been playing some Marvel's Avengers on the PS5, and boy, let me tell you that game. Looks and plays like butter. It is awesome on PS. You can tell it was definitely meant for next. Like after having that next gen version come out. Oh yeah. You can tell that when they were making this, they would have delayed it to next gen if it wasn't already done. Oh yeah, I think that that was probably like a Square thing. Square was like, you got to hit it, and then don't well, quit I, it. I, yeah, and I think it was done. Like the, the worst part is, is that it, the, the biggest issues of once again we run into that big problem of it's an online game, and it had such an it, it it didn't need to be. Nope. It needed to be like a party system game, not an auto join, quick lobby, whatever game. Yep. And I think that if they were just more open about stuff, I think we would have been fine. But the problem is, is that because you have that weird PR system where Anything that Ados wants to talk about, they have to run through Square, then Square has to talk about it, or let Ados talk about it. And so you run into an issue where when people are having issues, especially within the first couple weeks, and all people want to do is just hear that you're listening. And when you can't tell them that yep. until like a month later, people go, well, if you're telling me this a month after this... If you're going to tell me that this is coming out in two months, how do I know you're telling me the truth, right? And it, becomes yeah. this rolling cycle of everything but that game is so good it is really good and that's a game that i've said before on the show that it the the worst part about it is the amount of menus you have to flip through just because of the gear grind that i think is completely unnecessary like it slows the pacing down of a otherwise really good game so uh, i think the game is great i've been playing it again I, I, we talked about it on the show a couple weeks back and got me excited so i was like you know what i'm gonna do this and uh yeah i'm enjoying it quite quite thoroughly enjoying it so um that being said uh my sons and i are all going to be teaming up together and we're going to be grinding out the trophies i don't know we'll go for the platinum per se but that is the next thing that we're going to play together um i've been chipping away at agents of mayhem and i really enjoy this game like you beat the story right oh yeah yeah, i beat it a couple a week or two, two weeks ago I think I'm going to start that eventually. So I, I will say the story is not great. That is, it's just, that's not why you're there in my opinion. Um, but the freaking like the gameplay, it just throw on a podcast and play the game or throw on some music and play the game. It is fun. Like I, I think it's just dude. Volition has some of the best car, like driving mechanics. And just like the the moment to moment combat, it's just the the loop is fun. I am I really really enjoy it, and uh, I I decided that I'm going to go for the platinum. I don't know that I want to 100 percent commit to it, but like the longer I play, the more I'm like I don't want to put it down. 
Like I'm not done with it, even though I'm done with the game. So I'm ch- I'm going through and doing all the side quests and everything that I missed before. Um, I've been clearing out the outposts, and then I, I was looking at the trophy list, and I mean, some of that stuff's going to take a while. And then I got to rebeat basically all the main operation missions in on the hardest difficulty, which I've already maxed out a couple characters. So I don't think that's going to be terrible, but slightly frustrating. I did play a couple missions on the hardest difficulty just to kind of get a feel for it. And unless you have a full squad of characters, level 20 maxed out, like that's not a good idea just because you can get injured quickly from random explosions and stuff. Um, and then uh, I guess the other thing I want to, I'm going to briefly talk about, I'm playing some Saints Row four actually right now on the show. Uh, I love, 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 love Saints Row. And I got into Angels of Mayhem just because the new Saints Row is coming out. And so I've, uh, I'm playing Saints Row four. I've already platinum it on PS three. I'm going to platinum it again on PS four. I'm just kind of chipping away at it. And uh, the last yeah, thing I, I want to mention. I thought you started playing it because Jeff was mad because no one bought his game. I started playing Agents of Mayhem. <laughs> well, it's a combination of all of the above. So, um, But yeah, I started playing Agents of Mayhem because you know the new Saints Row is coming out. And I'm like, I didn't play the last game they did. And it's, it's no Saints Row. Like, don't get me wrong. It's no Saints Row. The opening of Saints Row 4 is so freaking good like it is it's one of the best openings in any video game i've ever played period ever. it's just so insanely good and it just epitomizes the saints row um so i'm gonna that's play- what i'm worried about though that's what i'm worried about with the sequel though yeah i mean we'll see i'm gonna buy it or i'm gonna play reboot. it and if it's bad i'll i'll get on here and tell you i mean well, it's I, not a reboot though it's, it is a sequel he said right it's like just it's like a i don't know you know with the way the saints row 4 ended they kind of have to reboot it. Yeah. Well, yeah, everything's gone. So we need to do a do a Saints Row retrospective for the Super Loop Bros on Patreon. But either way, uh, Saints Row is great. I'm loving it. I'm going to play through Saints Row 4. I might even, I got the Saints Row 3 remaster right beside me. I might do that one next. Yeah, um, we can play that together. Yeah. Player. Dude, so Joe's, fun. Joe's just wait, yeah, yeah, Joe, Joe's been waiting for me to buy it and it ain't happening anytime soon. So dude, that could be uh, some of our Saturday night or Sunday night streams, you know? Play yeah, I'm down. Saints Row I Saturday. will I will help you uh Bruce do Marvel Avengers Saturdays. Plat, though. Okay. I'm down. Carol, I will tell you, I I am only two trophies short, three trophies. Three trophies. Four? Pretty I think mighty. I'm like four. Oh, oh. I, I've spent a lot of time in this game. A lot of time, too I mean, much, too much time. Well, let's make that happen. Say. Let's start as early as this week. So, like I, so I've been saying on the show, my 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 weekends are opening back up because my wife's switching back to nights. So I'm going to be doing a whole lot more like actual like community centric stuff and um, playing games online with people because I you know when my wife's here, I like to play. You know, I like to play with her. <laughs> That's not what I meant to say. I uh, like to uh, <laughs> pay attention uh, to her. And if I'm playing a game in the background, cool. But but now that she's going to be working nights again, I'm going I'm going hard. I'm going ham. So either way. So and then the other thing I want to mention just briefly, I'm not going to go into crazy detail because I will be doing a deep dive on it this month uh, for the Patreon is the medium. Guys, listen to me, especially you, Joe, since you like horror games and, and stuff like that. This game is so freaking good. Don't sleep on the medium. It is phenomenal. Like I played it on Game Pass, and I was kind of chipping away at it on my lunch break on my PC, and I was really digging it. And it's not until about halfway through that the story ramps up and just grabs you by the balls and like keeps you <laughs> keeps you hooked. So yeah, I got a question for you, Daryl. I because sure. you played it on both. I played it on both. Now, yeah, because because. When we were the biggest argument anybody's ever made, and once again, I just want to, is that the medium was the first true next gen game ever to come out this yes. generation. Yes. Now, the argument I have for that is that it was a true next gen quote unquote built game, but having the haptic feedback and the little bits of like, I know the controller makes noise depending on where you are and having the adaptive triggers and all yes. that. Yes. Does that make it feel completely different and feel like a true next gen game compared to the Xbox? Like 1000%. It's not even in the same conversation. Uh, I was texting back and forth with a good friend of the show, Levi, 
And not only was I just talking about how much I love the game, but the haptic feedback and the, the things that the controller does during the game, it ramps that experience up to 11. And I really think that's why I liked it so much more playing it now versus when I was playing yeah. it on PC. Like, don't get me wrong. Like, I, I, I have always said I enjoy, like, some sort of feedback with my controller. Like, yeah. adding the microphone to it, I've always thought was cool. Um, having rumble, I think, is great. Like, I got PS3 controllers that were the six axis. I won't even use those because I want a DualShock. I want Rumble. And I was one of those guys that bought the wrist rumbler for the PS1. You know, it plugs into your freaking controller slot. You put your <laughs> controller in. Yeah, yeah, dude, yeah. I was one of those guys. So, like, you know, I've always been a huge support of Rumble. Any kind of feedback during your game. Dude, the haptic feedbacks sell this game by itself. And then what's really cool is you guys know on your PS5 controller how what replaced the light bars, that little like that yeah, little yeah, glowing light. Yeah. It does so much crazy stuff in this game. So like and and again, I don't want to go too much because I'm gonna do a deep dive, but that there's just there's just a lot. It's a lot. I don't want to talk about oh, it. Oh no, yeah, yeah. I, 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 the, I just want so I've cool. never really it's 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 I've played a lot of games um that are not even PlayStation exclusives, but a lot of that 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 PS4 to PS5, right? And I've yeah. played a lot of both. And the one thing is, like, I've played game, like I like played a lot of games where I went through a game all over again just for the sole purpose yes. to feel the difference. And um, like Death Stranding, completely different, hundred oh, percent, because the 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 weight of your character feels so much like when you're when you're running and you're about to fall and you like hit that R2 and you're like trying to hold it in because your guy's trying to rebalance yeah, like it yeah. it gives you the feeling of stuff and like when BB's crying and your light bar starts to like fade from from green to red it goes from green to like yellow to like red and it slowly starts to blink and it blinks faster and then when sh- like it's just it, it it's crazy to me that and we always talk about what makes the game next gen. And and I think last gen, we finally hit that point where graphics weren't doing that anymore. Yeah. Right. And now we had to find something new. And like the speed of the game is one thing, but like having that control, like I never thought that adaptive triggers and especially the vibration, the the, the haptic feedback would make a game feel so different being next gen. And um, like, like we were saying, Marvel's Avengers is a, another good game that does that with. And then oh, yeah. like another one uh, trick to all you guys out there. Anyone that is a trophy hunter, anyone that is a uh, avid PS plus guy. Um, as you know, we've got Hitman one and Hitman two on PS plus. Now the, we did not get the creme la creme of the Hitman three. I'm sure that's coming soon, but a trick for all you guys out there. If you own a PS5, go and download the Hitman 3 trial. This will install Hitman 3. Then it will allow you to install Hitman 2 and 1 into Hitman 3, which is not only a new trophy list for every single game. Wow. It then lets you collect Hitman 3 trophies, even though you don't own the game, while playing the paid version of hitman one and two and it gives you all the features of having hitman three like your haptic feedback and your adaptive triggers dude that's awesome and it looks far better and the, like it, it plays as the ps5 version and oh. because it what it does is it runs the ps4 versions just differently and the cool thing is is the real cool way they did it is it's all one hud so you log into hitman three and then it got it has all the season one story the season two story season three story it adds it all together so if like you want to play from start to finish um you can do that and you can jump into season two if you want or you can go to hit season one and then jump through the story there and it's cool because it goes hey if you're trying to play season two you should probably beat season one first and it kind of like gives you those hints and it's a real cool way for those trophy hunters out there as well as people that want to experience the difference between uh the ps4 and the ps5 version if you want to have a different experience just download that trial version of hitman 3 that's awesome i bought hitman 3 for that reason when they said the hitman 1 and 2 was built into it and i was like oh i i have it in the wrapper yep. still yeah well like i said you just need to download the trial just download the trial that's it you don't even need to take it out of the wrapper just download the trial version yeah you don't get hitman 3 right off the bat but it doesn't matter well it's all you need 
All right, so like I said, guys, get ready. This this month's Patreon, I'm going to be adding a bunch of content to it. I'm going to be doing some 2236 episodes. So anything I do for 2236, I'm throwing in the Loot Bros Patreon for patrons. So with that being said, let's get out of here and let's go over to the leaderboards. Leaderboards are fat and stacked. I still need to join that. I, I joined Finally True Trophies after, you know, the last time I was on the episode. And um, I need to get in there. Join the leaderboard. Yeah, man. It's, uh, it's, it's a dope. It's a dope place to be. So it's a nice little thing, especially, in, I mean, I, I, know, I really hate that CJ left the leaderboard. You know, but CJ and Cool Kid Joe were dominating leaderboard for so long. Now that they've both removed themselves from it, that us little peasants can actually get on there and get some trophies and... <laughs> <laughs> what's freaking, it what's it called what's the leaderboard called again just for all those people out there that the, haven't joined like me the loot bros podcast on true trophies and there's a true achievements leaderboard for all you xbots all you game pasturbators all you got to do is go on there create yourself a little profile so it'll let you sync it up with your xbox or your playstation and then every seven days we read out sometimes the top three sometimes the top five sometimes we just kind of skip around and see what everybody's doing uh, on our custom leaderboard. And right now, in first place, the resident Daryl with 277 trophies. Wow. That's right, baby. Freaking cool. smashing it. Smashing it. Second place, Mr. TMNT, 84 with 35. Yay! <laughs> MZ Nitro is in third place with 17. And then, oh, look here, guys. Tricky Mix in fifth place with 13. Hmm. Definitely ain't gonna be passing me like that, bruh. So, again, unfortunately, Tricky does have a actual. He has a real excuse why he is not doing great this week. So, that being said, we're gonna head over to. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna read out a couple of them here. So it looks like uh, Mr. TMT84 has been playing. The, yeah, he's had final earlier Final Fantasy VIII. That's the only uh, Final Fantasy I've. That's not really true. I did play that one. I don't know that I beat Final Fantasy VIII because that's the one where they actually had like actual full size characters in it. Yep, that was a that was a good one. I don't know that I beat that one. I think actually I was playing it and my brother finished it. We that was back when we used to have to share consoles. A little jerk. And then uh, Enzy Nitro, he's playing some Saints Row. Got out of hell. Shout out to Enzy. Let's see what else we got here. Tricky's playing Mortal Kombat Eleven. Mr. Redbeard Rick's playing some Last of Us 2. He just threw that on his latest list, too. So that'll be beat by tomorrow. <laughs> so, I wonder if he has like an easy button. He just fucking presses. He's like, oh, done. He, he's a monster. I guess when you're a pro gamer like that, you know, it comes natural. Speaking of Redbeard Rick, uh, on the True Achievements custom Loot Bros podcast leaderboard, Redbeard Rick with 1,065 gamer score. So he busted out the uh, the Walking Dead New Frontier. Said, "Meh, what not a great game." In second place, <laughs> we we have the uh, the number two game pasturbator out there. We got I'm styling on you, bro. Friggin' five hundred and ten achievement points. There Plays we go. I just War. added myself into there the. And then third place, we got I Drop Roaches. Guess what he's playing? Minecraft. No, he's playing Saints Row the Third Remastered. Yes, sir. Shout out to Zach. So he's Dude, actually he's playing, playing a game. game. He's playing. He's got COVID. He's, he can't be at the titty bar. Oh shit! That's right. I, I, I'm telling you, when you when you when you can't go to the titty bar, you're gonna have to stay home and play video games. But he actually mm-hmm. he's actually playing a real game, like yeah, not Minecraft. 455 achievement points. He's going through it. I thought he was gonna get like the Hong Kong stack of like Minecraft while he wasn't <laughs> feeling well. So uh, yeah, and then we got T Bird with zero. Oh, you suck. <laughs> And turd bird. Oh, turd bird. Yeah. Friggin' no show T bird. So, all right. Uh, I just refreshed. You have not officially made it on the list uh, yet. I see myself. I'm just no, there you underneath. Are seventh place. I'm just, a gamer. Yeah. Hey, you didn't make it on there. Look at there. Play four trophies. I'm proud of you. Yeah. I mean, that was just in the last like two days or just today, okay. I think. Okay. I don't know. That's what I would say too. Like, hey, you know, if I, if I was way down there like that, I expect, <laughs> I expect you to get those rookie numbers up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I will. Now that I'm not playing, uh, not wasting my life on New World, uh, it'll definitely be happening. Yeah, yeah. You already got, you got you some world records on, in, the, in the bag. You got you some New World under the belt. Oh, yeah. I just, now I can finally actually like play games to play games finally. There you go. Let's get trophies. Let's do it. Oh, All right. I'm going to go play those uh, 
I don't know if you've played them yet. You probably have the uh, ZJ. Uh, what is it called? ZJ oh, yeah. oh, World yeah. or whatever. Oh, yeah. the, those those, those are the games. most. Oh man, those are the most interesting games with the most interesting story I've ever had in my life. It's great. Hey man, somebody's gotta make them. Yeah. All right. So with the backlog beat down this week, Kalai is out doing whatever Kalai does when she's not on the show. So we'll jump into the backlog beat down a little bit deeper next week. But for those of you who have not been paying attention, it is October. This thing's getting close to an end. So you guys got to get back on them lists. Redbeard Rick knocked out. He's on his 20th list. 20th list. Freaking nuts. So y'all got to get on it. All right, let's jump into, since we've been running long, we're going to jump right into community questions. Since T-Bird's not here to fumble up the questions for us, I am going to do it. Let's see how bad I screw them up, boys. I'm styling on you. I'm going to do something. I don't know if that's going to be good, but (laughs) I'm styling on you, bro. Writes in, he says, with the recent addition of some more Japanese-style games or anime as well as horror titles for Halloween, which types of games do you think Game Pass will tend to next to diversify their already lackluster, <clears throat> excuse me, I mean, impressive portfolio? Uh, what do you boys think that the old the Game Pass probation is going to have on? Well, it? I mean, they, they just had TGS and, you know, they got a flex that they've got Japanese developers underneath their belt. So I think they're going to go find some small Japanese developers, maybe Resident Evil, like the Resident Evil series, like the, the, ooh, the remakes ooh, ooh. that we were just talking about. You know, it depends. They're going to find the... They, you know, you, the thing with Game Pass, the way you got to do it is you got to find games that are already been played by millions, already, you know, have served their time. They've already done what they need to do. They've already made their money because you, you can't pay them money, right? You got to pay them pennies. So you got to make sure that you can, you don't want to go after a game that's going to make money because you got to pay them good money. So you just got to go after the games that are going to make pennies, right? So what they're going to do is they're going to find the game that sits around the Metacritic around 70%. They don't, they can't have good games, right? So they got to look at that 70% to 75% find, and they're going to find some good horror games in that category. And they're going to be like, those are the games we want. Hey man, that's and they're going to give you in that's that that's, that's, 70 you know is three times the score of Microsoft uh, first party is going to get. <laughs> Got him. I mean, the funniest thing, if you guys ever want to come check out the dual screens podcast, I know like the loop bros is the best podcast ever made, but one mm-hmm. of the funniest things I've ever heard someone say is, uh, Steve was talking about halo infinite and he says, you know what the great thing about halo infinite is, even though we're only getting one third of a game, because it's Halo Infinite, even if you break it into a third, it's still infinite. Oh, that's that's pretty clever. <laughs> Actually, so I've been listening to a bunch of Xbox podcasts lately. And um, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, hey, I've been been driving, you know, them them eleven hour drives. It's a little bone, a little bone dry. I listen to even the even the crappy podcast. Well, I mean, you got to listen to the Xbox ones. Gets your blood pumping, keeps you awake. <laughs> nah, nah. Actually, uh, I, yeah. All jokes aside, um, I've been listening to a bunch of Xbox podcasts. Those just in my in my regular rotation. And um, one of the things that uh, Jeff Grubb, he was a guest on Defining Duke lately, and he's one of those industry insiders that leaks all the all the games and stuff. He leaked the Dead Space remake, yeah. all that stuff. Yeah. Um, one of the things he said, and I didn't think about it in terms of Game Pass, but is that, you know, with inflation going up, the bean counters over at Microsoft are saying, get rid of this money because next physical year, next year, this money's not going to be worth as much. So that's why they've been, you know, talking about like uh, big investments on games for Game Pass, um, big acquisitions, things like that. They were talking about like the, the Bethesda money and how like the, that Bethesda money wouldn't be worth as much next year as it did this year. It was a very, very interesting conversation they had, basically talking about just how Microsoft has been throwing around money, even yeah. though they have it to throw around in general, that it's almost like they're they're being, they're in a position, I don't know they're being forced, they're in a position to where it is a good idea to get that money in circulation and use it up now uh, rather than sit on it. So that was very, very, that's very cool. They, they talked also cause you know, uh, word around the internet was that game pass was at 30 million subscribers. 
And then they mm-hmm. were talking about a uh, Windows Central uh, article or conversation and uh, one with Phil Spencer as well, where it was like, yeah, the last you know, last time we talked about it was at 18 million. You know, we might be at 30, kind of wink and nod. But realistically, they're not. And on their last investors call, they didn't give a number because they didn't want the bad press of it not being 30 million. So uh, uh, the the actual estimation now is it's at 23 million subs. There's still a ton. It's a fart ton of subs. But oh, yeah. it just, it's like I listen to these podcasts and a lot of people are like, they freaking, the Game Pass is like, people just milking that Game Pass. I'm like, God almighty, it's good. I get it. But good Lord. You guys act like it's the greatest thing since sliced bread. Well, I mean, we don't have to pay for games. I mean, I get it. Dude, okay, I, I saw a conversation today, and I was just rolling my eyes. I'm like, this is this right here. Is, this is the problem. There was this freaking dude, and he was like talking about the game Visage. It's a first-person psychological survival horror game coming to uh, Game Pass. And it's freaking heavy, bro. Like, it's one, that, that intro is one of the most shocking and violent intros I've ever seen in a game. Like I was, it was a tone piece too. It was, it was interesting. It was very, very interesting. And so, uh, I I was playing, I I was like, man, this game's wild, dude. So anyway, so they're talking about that coming to game pass. And I was looking, reading the comments like, oh man, people are gonna be celebrating this. And it was just this whole freaking thousands of comments. I mean, it was thousands in there, but it was like only, I only read a dozen or two. It's about people complaining about, I'm not buying games anymore. Every time I buy a game, it goes on Game Pass and blah, blah, blah. And I was just like, oh, gosh, this is the fear. Well, that's, the, that's, the, that's the stigma now, right? The problem is, is that like any company, it's, it's the, 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 the double negative, right? If you put your game on Game Pass right away, especially if you're an indie company, like the, remember the good old days when, when PS Plus first started giving out PS Plus games? Mm-hmm. And the biggest argument that people had was the PS Plus games were going to, like, especially when the first game they ever gave, gave us, Daryl, you probably remember the first PS Plus game. The first PS Plus game we ever got was Super Rub-A-Dub. Now, what a game. <laughs> it <laughs> the, was something. It was something. The six-axis, it showed you the six-axis. What a game. But it built a stigma, for PlayStation people at least, and it took PlayStation a long time to get rid of that stigma, where basically PlayStation Plus games were the okay, this is the shit that's not going to sell. Yep. Or this is the shit that's been out for so long, it's worth pennies anyway, no one cares. Right. Well, then we went through a phase with PlayStation Plus as well, where people were like, I'm not buying it because every time I buy a game, it goes on PlayStation Plus. I mean, even Levi was just on some shows recently saying that. And you know, all these things. Yeah, then he bought a PS5, so whatever. Yeah. Well, I mean, all these things are valid <laughs> because it happens. I'm, but like, I mean, I, I half the time can't even get games from my PS Plus because I own all of them. Yeah. yeah, and it is what it is, but it's one of those things to where my fear with Game Pass has been this has been that it's going to do to games what you know what Netflix and Amazon and stuff have done to movies, which is no one buys their movies anymore. You know, no well, one, buy, it, no yeah, one buys it's just, albums. It's just anymore. waiting for it's like yeah. uh, Joe was sitting there with me yesterday, getting all mad at me. We're such great friends, but you know he's getting all mad because I'm Canadian. And uh, we got Free Guy for free on Disney Plus. And it's not that I didn't want to pay for Free Guy. It just so happened I finally had five time to watch it. And I did. And But then Joe's like, but then everybody I know that's like not Canadian. And they're like, well, I'll just, I'll just download it on a, a quote unquote a legal site. Or I'll find another way to watch it. Or I'll use my VPN. Or like I'll wait for it to be come to like over here. And it's like there's... The, everyone complained like this is the thing and i watched a guy do a video on this and it's crazy and i hope people start realizing this is it was a video where he did a study on free to play games on the mobile market and the idea that since free to play or freemium games appeared up on the mobile market like uh what was it like the top game of the mobile market was like clash of heroes or something like that something stupid and it made 8.5 billion dollars in one year and that has made more money than the the last avengers movie endgame the highest grossing movie of all time and the idea that this mobile game that is just free a free to freedom game that they give you whatever for free and they make you pay for everything 
it runs you into that predicament is like, okay, so if everything's going to be built to go on Game Pass or go on to a free service or go on to whatever, at the exact same time, that just gives more people excuses to go, well, I've got to make money somehow. So yep. here's your free game, but I'm going to charge for skins. It's the same thing as like Splitgate. Like there's a good, it, it's a good when you get a game like Splitgate that's free to play that's a good game and it's like okay cool uh, if you want to pay for skins you want to pay for skins and you got to pay for a battle pass if you want to but you can still play the game for free and it's a great game to play there's not no locked content behind it but my worry is is what we're going to see happen in the next little bit is we're going to start to have games because they're not seeing that money of pre-orders they're not seeing like no one's pre-ordering games anymore and that, that's gone down like crazy and so what I think we're going to see happen is we're going to see the problem of developers going, well, this is going to Game Pass or this is going to PS Plus right away or this is going to whatever. We're just going to push it out. And then we're going to fix it once it's out when we're going to have all these people playing it because it's a free a free game for everyone. That'll like feel. Demolition Derby for PlayStation 5 was a great example of that where it came out and everyone got it for free. It was a huge rush to play everything. And then it was like, uh... There's not much of a game here. And the problem is, is that because they were already have kind of got their money from being that PS plus and they still got a little bit more for everyone downloading it at that point in time, they're like, OK, well, now we have to try to work on de developing it while we still have the fan base. And if that you can't keep that fan base, well, now it's a dead game. And I think that's the biggest issue we're going to start to see to happen is if all these games are coming free to Game Pass first is that company has now got to make enough money off having it's the mcdonald's method right they got to make more money because they sold 20 million burgers at a penny compared to selling only 5 million copies at full price or even even less than that a hundred thousand or even uh, even half a million yeah half a million copies at full price or they can sell 30 million of them or 40 million of them or 70 million of them at the at 10 cents a piece and that's where the biggest issue comes in is that they have to really hope that everyone tries it out. Everyone buys it. Everyone does it. And my worry is, is that we're going to get to a point where there's so many games hitting these services now that we're going to have games that don't get played or don't see things and, and, and aren't getting that. And then we're just going to see them not get the income they need from those that service side of things to be able to update their game. And then we're going to have rehashes on everything like you, you, there's no such thing as new movies anymore. Everyone's just remaking things. Like, mm -hmm. I just saw a remake for Amazon that's like, we know what you did last summer, the TV series. And I'm like, okay, Scream. And then you made the Scream series, but the Scream series was like, Scream was a good movie. The Scream series was okay. But now you're doing, I don't know what you did last summer, which was a terrible movie to begin with. And now you're making a TV what series are you because. What waiting for? It's like. What are you waiting for? It's like, I don't, it's like, I get it. You're just trying to like live off that nostalgia thing. And that's where I, I we're going to run into this problem. We're going to run into where we're either a praying, paying for early access to have games be built properly and running the Patreon system and everything like that, that we have, or we're going to run into the problem where people are just having games released on game pass. And then they're trying to fix it as it's going out and it's going to suck. And people go, well, you know, and, and, and I don't know, like, I know this isn't, I, we're already going oh, to like, off. I'm already going into a rant here. See, <laughs> rant and, and, and age. Well, yeah. here, here's the thing. Um, getting kind of back to the question at hand, I think that yeah. we're going to get a whole bunch of more stuff um, seasonally. I, is it just one that I just mentioned that is already, that we, if our announcement is coming to Game Pass, um, we'll see. I, I is hope, costume, was a uh, costume party, is that PlayStation exclusive? Costume Quest? Or, or, or costume, costume party, party. That's party. It. No, no, no it's Xbox Quest. 360 game. Yeah, Xbox, Xbox. No, yeah. No, 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 Quest and Quest, the one that was for PlayStation that we got for PS Plus for Halloween. Um, that? Yeah, it came to Xbox first, didn't it? Came it? To Xbox first, yeah. Oh, I have no idea. Was All I know is I got it for PS. I got it for PS Plus. Well, I know two came out first on PlayStation, I think. I can't remember. Either way, it doesn't matter, but I, that, that's a cool game. Yep. That should go on there. It's a good I, game. I, I believe it was on there at one point in time. I don't know. So anyways, yeah, yeah I, I hope, I mean, honestly, like I, I'm a, a game pass subscriber. So um, even though I don't really use it, I hope it gets some more horror themed games. I don't care nothing about that Japanese anime stuff. Resident Evil's about as Japanese as I get. That's I mean, the, the Japanese market's not huge into Microsoft and I don't think it ever will be. It's nope. just not mm -hmm. like you can try and woo them all you want, but 
They mostly play Switch or PlayStation. That's what they play. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yep. Or their their Japanese hentai. Their <laughs> Pacheco machines? <laughs> I guess. I don't know. My wife was telling me about some documentary she watched where basically how like this team went over into Japan and all these people were on their phones everywhere and then public transit. And that was like a huge percentage of them that were just looking at at hentai and porn yeah, on their yeah. phones. They, they, yeah, because the, not even on their phones, uh, because in Japan, when you buy a book or anything, now, now it's on your phone, but originally when you bought a book, the way they did it to not judge people is they would cover the book in brown paper so that the idea was is that everybody would just read a brown paper book. You would have no idea what that person's reading. And so it's no one can judge. So like it's the same idea where just no one really like no one had there's no in Japan. There's like no like you can't you don't shame people for what they do. So just everybody does whatever they want. It's weird. I'm shame them from America. Y'all freaking weird anime nerds. So <laughs> all right. CJ rides in and he goes, what do you really think about hardcore trophy and achievement hunters? Now, this was a leftover from a week or so ago. I think this might have been the show that I got like booted off of. So two weeks ago. Um, and I wanted to have this conversation with actual people who have spent time hunting and getting trophies. I didn't want none of these freaking nerds that don't ever do anything to have access to this. Conversation. The people that, so the people that have played IMAO for trophies, you mean? Whoa, 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 I do that all the time. So I'm just saying, what do you guys, what, what, what is our, uh, our thoughts on the hardcore, not, not just the guys that like that get trophies occasionally, you know? Oh yeah. The guys that actually like look up walk guides and then like, see yeah, yeah, like, you talking about, you talking about the rat it? trashers, rat trashers. Yeah. Well, it's, it's gotten to be a thing now. It, where I think it, I think it's got, it, it, that's the thing. I don't think, I think it's like the nice cool thing is like hardcore trophy hunting and sense or trophy hunting in general has such a broad category now. Whereas before it used to be, you're a trophy hunter or you're not. Yep. Whereas now, like, you've got your trophy hunters that we like to call the rat platters. And yep. then we've got the trophy hunters like me that, like, Joe, like the 50 percenters. Yep. And then there's people like me that will just, if I really enjoy a game, like, I don't know what category I'm in. But, like, if I really enjoy a game, I basically uh, will play it and play it. That's my way of showing that I really appreciate it. And I think that hardcore trophies in general without us... I think trophies have changed gaming for the better and I same agree. with achievements. And I think that like I played, I bought an Exod just to, to just to feel the, the, the endorphins of, of gaining achievements. And, you know, I, I gained 16,000 points in like less than a month. And it was like, you know, your classics, your round three and your King Kong. Oh, and, yeah. Oh, yeah. Eight hours, yeah. thousand G's. Yeah. Yeah. You know, the good old, like, all those games and then when it came to trophies like you look at playstation even now and or even steam achievements like one of the coolest thing is i got a steam achievement while playing new world that was called the baconator and it's because i killed a hundred pigs and then i got another one called the 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 it was the trophy the achievement was called gobble gobble and it gave you an achievement it gave you a status bar that was called the turkinator and it was like you killed a hundred turkeys and i it's just cool because it gives you once you've beat a game and especially if, like, you go, you talk about Daryl, like, where you love, like, Resident Evil and all that kind of stuff. And back in the day, it was just like, here, let's 100% the game. Right? Yep. Let's that just was do the all thing. the things. But what does that entail? And, and that's the kind of neat thing is that the t- way trophy systems are built and the way achievement systems are built is it builds you into the sense of a person that wants to be good at something or wants to feel like they've 100% to the game or fully accomplished something. Um, it gives them a guideline on how to do it. Yep, and, and that's it the coolest thing about the game. It. And it's like, oh, it exactly, content. it is because it it's like, oh well, like like with Avengers, like if I wasn't going for the plat, I would have beat the game, probably got about halfway through the game with most of the stuff, and then just been like, okay, wipe my hands of it, delete it off my console, call it a day. But because, like Joe watched me the other day where I, I finally platted Diablo 3 after losing my save three times. And I had to do the 500 bounty quest. And he watched me, he, he listened to me anyway for, for four straight hours to get that. Or no, for longer than that. I played it for almost 12 hours. So just doing bounties just to get that trophy. And I even had it where my nephew who had platted the game, he's like, 
I'm like, I'm 25 bounties away. He's like, okay, we're going to do one last final run. He's like, I'll jump in. Let's make this a moment. Like, let's all do this. And it just, because it's, it's, you feel, everyone wants to get in together to help that. Right. And that's the cool thing. I've never seen a community where you can see a dead game and people will go, I just have one more trophy. Like for me, I have one more trophy in Far Cry 5 to just do the multiplayer trophy. And you I'll can be like, you. I got Far Cry 5 sitting right beside me. Yeah, and you have to do the multi, you have to have six people and whatever it is, but either way, it's like you have one trophy or you have a couple trophies and you see them form sites all the time. I just need that one more achievement and I it's in this dead game that's been like 10 years gone and everyone's like, let me well boot up my PS3, let's load this up, yep. like let's get this done and the community supports you on that and I think that um, from the hardcore standpoint, I mean, you do have the people like CJ that will find like every single game, but at the exact same time, it's it's i think those people kind of put the people into pressure of like what me what makes good trophies i mean if you can beat the gift if, if cj can beat it in three hours and goes through it that's not really that much of a good trophy list per se that's just a, a trophy list that's there where if you have a trophy list where you know that last little trophy takes you a couple hours to do on your own or is challenging to you like that's what i find as a good trophy list and it's just a neat way of doing it where, you know, it brings people into like that new PS5 feature where we can have hints and tricks. The idea that that is built around technically trophies where I can click on a trophy that's for a PS5 game and I can go, OK, I can go, OK, I don't know where this collectible is or whatever it is so I can finish my trophy. And it shows you a video of how to get it. It's kind of it's pretty dope. people doing tutorials. And yep. it's so neat and fun. So. Well, I, I got to say, when it, when it comes to the hardcore trophy and achievement hunters, I got mad respect for them because it takes, you know, trophy hunting and achievement hunting is always a war of attrition. Where if it's a hard game and you're a, you know, you play the hard games, that's what you do. You're a masochist. You have to work through them, fight through them, learn the patterns. You have to freaking bang your head up against the wall for these crazy difficult games just to get your trophies. If you're a spam hunter, the only way to even be relevant and be on leaderboards and be in to catch up is to, to play every one of these spam games. And I play a, a, a decent chunk of them. And dude, sometimes they're just, they're frustrating. But then once they're on your list, you're like, oh my gosh, I got to get them. I got to finish it. I got to get it off. I got to, I got to get the hundred percent. And there's several times where I've played games that, that seem like easy trophy games that just friggin' they're, they're frustrating. <laughs> so there's a, there's a different type of skill that comes with that. And then, you know, you have guys like, like, I like Joe, I like, like Joe's whole, I like to get at least 50%. You know, being yeah, being 50 percentile. That's a, that's a good spot to be because that means you've completed the game and you did a little bit extra. You know, um, me, I like to platinum the games that I really, really enjoy. Yeah. Unless the list is frustrating and then I'll bounce. So, and then I play a lot of spam. I play a lot of spam in between. And the thing about the thing for me, and I've said this a ton of times on the show, is just that having these cheap these cheap easy platinum games it, they usually they're usually like little bite sized things i can do when i don't have time to actually jump in a full full if it says it's going to take an hour or more to do one of these little spam games i usually don't do them because Trophy. of that let's go brandon, let's go, brandon. Wow, wow 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 because at that point if I'm going to spend an hour on Trophy. that, I, let's go, Brandon. I can spend an hour on a real game, on a, on a good game, you know? But if it's like yeah. 10 to 20 minutes, oh, I can 10 to 20 minutes at death. So, well, it's you? like I'm trying to, I've been trying to get this platinum in. Like, I, I know this is the, like, and talk about games that I like. One game I've been trying to get is uh, Skater XL. You get the platinum in that, and I, I've put in the whole problem with this one is you have to do the, the the run. I think it's like what is it? Ride thirty kilometers or something like that. Which the game I've definitely overdone that, but the game has a terrible tracking system for that. But like I was reading forums, and it's like yeah, just like purposely have to set up your character so he wipes out and does this, and uh, you know. 200 hours later you'll get the trophy i'm like okay well yeah, it's just just that easy 
I'm like 400 hours into this game because I've been doing it technically. I've been actually just playing the game and that yeah, that's yeah. I, I I go through these ebbs and flows too because like sometimes I fancy myself as a as a hardcore achievement trophy hunter and then I'll start just doing this whatever gets the most score and mm. then I get, I get a little like burnt on that and I go all right now I want to get like let me go through a phase where I actually want to just beat games that I enjoy and try to platinum what I enjoy and I I constantly wrestle with this idea of platinuming the entire Resident Evil franchise and then I start it and then I go freaking a these trophy lists suck so much balls I'm not doing this. <laughs> I just deleted Resident Evil <laughs> Revelations 2 for the second time because I'm like, this this trivia sucks. I don't I just don't want to do it. So, so there's that. Yep. So we got mad respect for you, hardcore trophy and achievement hunters. Oh, what's Joe's opinion on this? I didn't I don't think we I think we just he just kind of was there getting trophies. Uh, no, no I, I I made my I said a little bit. I, I, I feel like there's two camps here. There's always the camps that there's the camp of like people like like Alex, right from Trophy Horse. Like Alex hates hates like trophy spammers. Hates them because he's a purist, right? He plays real games, quote unquote, and he's a completionist. He completes them and platinums them. And I think the dude has. Does he have like a ninety nine point nine percent completion rating, Daryl? I think that's what it is, right? It's up there. I mean, it's like ridiculous. Like he's never put anything in his console that he hasn't beat. And he's got a few, and there's some that I just think that the servers and stuff have closed. I think he's got his profile um, private. I'll look at. I'll look it up while you're talking. But I, I just think there's two separate camps where, like, he doesn't, he can't stand people that like CJ that just like nothing can't stand them, but he has no respect for people that spam because he's like it's bullshit and they're, they're crap, they're, they're trash trophies. It's like inflating an e penis to him. That's literally what it is. He's like, he's like, you're, there's no skill or merit in getting any of these trophies. He's like, he's like, it's cool that they still play real games. They still get trophies in real games, but like, it's just, it's insane. But yeah. I guess it comes down to the point of like, what counts as a real game? Because I mean, like the big arguments is like that everyone goes to IMAO because that was kind of like you know the starter of the open the, the it opened the floodgates. It opened the floodgates for a lot of people. And, you know, I am Mayo, the original, had some concepts. But then, I mean, I am too, I am Mayo too, changed the industry. Like that, that gave a game where it wasn't, it actually, it was actually a good game. And same with like, I play Cat Lateral Damage for Platinum. That, that was a, that was, that was a, a good game. game. I liked it. And like, like that's the thing. I mean, the, the, the problem is now is that there, there are those quote unquote rat plats where it's like you just, start the game and you're done but at the exact same time like there's those rat plats that people call rat plats where i like i think cat lateral damage is not a rat plat and a lot of people are like well you could beat it under whatever many hours and i'm like yeah but it's it's not, it's a fun game you still have to beat the game to to beat to, to get the platinum you can't just like yep. finish it off and do it but it's actually a good game and it's not just like 30 seconds but they got a remaster for ps5 i know i've and been ps4 over, the dual I've pack daryl for 15 bucks Oh, you both? Looking at, yeah, yeah you same, with, same, with, same with same with same with like hentai versus evil. Great game. Uh, so I, I, I want to get that because it's a easy platinum, but then it's hentai versus evil. So I don't. I figured it was actually pretty. No. It, uh, okay. So let me it. let's go, Brandon. Let me phrase it this way. Uh, PlayStation censored everything. Okay. So it's just basically bikini babes versus zombies or evil. That That's it. Whereas on the Switch, which surprised the hell out of me, on the Switch, there's an uncensor button. Hmm. And I was like, huh, Nintendo. Nintendo's uh, making moves now into that market. Nintendo, yeah, Nintendo, Nintendo just wants everybody to put their shit on their console. Yeah, but but like no, but there's the sensor button. But the idea that was on the PlayStation and not on the like there was no uncensor button on the PlayStation, whereas on the Switch there is. And I'm like, huh, that's interesting. That's how Agony is. If you buy Agony on the PlayStation, it's uh it's the sensor version. But if you um get the Switch version, it's uncensored. So so what's the next community question, Daryl? What, what other 
fun things we have to talk about. Uh, all right. So Matt G writes in, he says, back in the days of Tony Hawk 2, they snuck Spider-Man into the game as a secret character. What superhero would you like to see in your favorite game as a playable secret character today? Mm. This is another one that was on the show that I got booted from. And I don't remember if you guys answered this one, Joe. It was sandwiched in between two Nintendo questions. We so, might have, but we can answer it again since you're on. I don't, I don't really care. Yeah. Oh, I'm a, I'm a big superhero fan, so I think that, uh, yeah. I'll let you guys go first, though. I'm going I'm to do my last. Hmm. That's a good question. Damn. All right. Well, I'll do mine now, then. Let y'all think about it. So if we're talking about like a Marvel or DC character... Right, I want to. I'd love to see Batman and some more stuff. Like seeing Batman in Fortnite was pretty cool. Obviously, seeing Wolverine in Fortnite was cool. I would love to see the Punisher in Fortnite. So I think that will be friggin' dope. I think that uh, I would like to see some more characters like that. I think that um, if we're talking about just any form of superhero, I think more Duke Nukem. Yeah, yeah. I think Duke Nukem in anything. Seeing Duke Nukem in Bulletstorm was freaking awesome. Dude, that was such cool DLC. That was freaking. That was so. And I love stuff like that because it was like Lost Planet Two had um, Marcus and Dom from Gears of War in it, and that was really cool. Um, and they had, I think Wesker was in one of the versions. I think maybe he was in the PlayStation version. I don't remember that one. Might but see any kind of crossover like that with like just overly super powered characters or things that are a little, you know, I, again, I don't, superheroes aren't just limited to Marvel and DC and stuff, but um. I think that would be friggin' awesome. I remember you're playing Saints Row, and you could literally put any superhero in Saints Row Four. Like, yeah, dude, imagine the Rock in Saints Row Four. Oh my gosh! But it would have to be the Rock from uh, Trophy. Uh, Let's go, Brandon. A Hobbs and Shaw Rock. <laughs> oh my gosh! We went to Universal Studios on our vacation. And we did the Fast and the Furious. The ride. Um, the ride. Have you seen that? Yeah, I went on it. Oh, my gosh. It is so stupid. It's so ridiculous. It's just like the movie, I swear. Ben Diesel gets on a helicopter and flies over to the tank that the rock is on just to talk to him and then fly. But hanging <laughs> off the side of it and then rides it back to his freaking vehicle. Like, it's so, like, when I watch anything Fast and the Furious, I can't, I just, it's so dumb. So dumb. But you, but it's, but you still watch it. Oh, absolutely. absolutely. Yeah, yeah. See, for me, it, I guess it would become depends on like, like if it was just a straight cameo, like they just like a skin or something like that, um, like just a straight character, like not any superpowers or anything like that or whatever. I mean, putting Deadpool and Death Stranding would be pretty hilarious. <laughs> having that, having that fourth wall break, that in the sense weird. of like. The having the him talk about how how much walking you're doing and like this package and like all that, and then like on the the cusp of Batman, the cool one if they actually like full built in not a skin like actually did something is to have like Batman and Ghost of Tsushima. Whoa! Oh, like Samurai Bat- Batman? Samurai Batman, yeah, Samurai Batman and Ghost of Tsushima. There like, you go. That'd be good. But yeah, that's me. And then Joe's is like probably Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and into anything. Cause... I was just trying to think about where we're going to put the turtles at. That was that was what I was saying, thinking. I'm like, Listen, oh. I think that's what I said last. I think that's I I think that's what I said after I answered. I'm gonna go with a crazy one. I'm oh. gonna put I'm gonna put Orgasmo <laughs> and Shota Boy and Shota Boy <laughs> in the South Park games. Bro, yes, that would work. That would totally work. Yep. Oh, that'd be awesome. All right. Uh, CJ writes in again. He goes, <laughs> That's orgasmo. CJ writes in and says, if you were taking four months off from your regular life with no responsibilities and no commitments, i.e. running from the government, what four <laughs> games would you play? Oh, you only get four. That's easy. Saints Row 1, Saints Row 2, Saints Row 3, and Saints Row 4. I mean, we have only we have four months though. That's that's if I I'm only spending four months playing every single game. Now, do we have internet access? 
Or is this like you have to have a game that would be able to just... If you said game, so I guess you have internet. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean... Just because you're running from the government doesn't mean you have full Wi-Fi access. I mean, mean, you're running running from the government, so you probably need to stay off the grid. So I'm going to say no internet. Well, what about if you're like VPNing yourself? I mean, you're going to get... I mean, even Jason Bourne gets tracked by the internet. So. Okay, okay. So no internet games, eh? Games that I could... I mean, you got (sighs) to... Four games. Just, I, I, how about this? We'll we'll go around. We'll go around the table. All right. I'm gonna say first things first. Resident Evil Two, the OG. All right. I'm gonna say Hyrule Warriors for my first one. There you go. I'm That's gonna it. say Bloodborne. Ooh. Yep. So you're never gonna because, finish that game. <laughs> yeah, you're never gonna finish it. And then if you do, it's gonna like remind you of the dark times and remind you that your life's so much better, even though you're running from the <laughs> It's like I need to go back. <laughs> I need to go back. Did you guys see where the rumor is that Blue Point is making yeah. a PS5 version of And a sequel. And a sequel of Bloodborne. And a sequel, yeah. It's it's oh man. That's, I if um, that's true, and especially if they like go like they just the craziness and they're like, Yeah, guess what? And you upgrade your PS4 version, and I'd be like Ten dollar upgrade. Let's go. I'll pay ten dollars. Oh, dude, nah. They, they're gonna have to do like. Oh my gosh, they they get they get running smooth. So, oh, I'm so glad Sony bought them. Like, oh man, just I, a matter of time. I was worried they were gonna let them slip because they let a couple studios slip. They just, I was like, it was beyond me. Um, like, super massive. Like, why the freak did they let Super Massive go? Could you imagine the uh, Dark Pictures anthology? You know, with actual like. Sony money behind it, opposed to just like I don't know the Bandai money is bad, but well, I mean, I think I think it's I, I don't know. It's one of those things where I think from what I've seen with Sony picking studios that they're picking, they're picking studios that they feel they can improve what they're already doing. Whereas I think the with Super Massive, it's kind of the the side of thing where. Yeah, they would have got Sony money, but I don't think they needed Sony money. It was more the idea they just need to do their own thing. And I think that's where, you know, it would have been nice for them to have it. But at the same time, like, I think Sony just needed to pull back their own franchises. Like, that's I, I, I think that, well, they, you know, they, holding their own things is probably what they want to do. The thing that killed me is that they let both studios like that go. You know, Quantic Dream and Supermassive. Quantic Dream was the one I was surprised about because Quantic Dream was the idea. Like Supermassive, I was like, you know what? It it kind of makes sense because it's more of the horror. Like they're more family orientated. But the idea that Quantic Dream, a game company that made two exclusives for them, three, 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 yeah. ex- three exclusives for them, go, was like, but but. But they've only made stuff for you, so it's like <laughs> yeah. I guess if they're that if they're that loyal to you, I guess you don't need to buy them like Microsoft. But you know, I well, guess I mean when when a company wants to just, when all companies just want to produce games for your console because you know you're a good company to produce games for, I, I guess you don't need to own them. But well, at the same time, it's I'm know. not I'm not for everybody being owned by 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 everybody. You know, that's what I mean, and that's where I, I think it's that nice was to one that I was always like I always look forward to since Heavy Rain. I look forward to my Aquatic Dream games. Yeah, you know, and three games are great, but it's just it was one of those things where I was like, man, like how, just I don't know they. But who knows? Maybe that's where you know when the next game's about to come out, then they announce it because that would make more sense for them, I guess. Anyway, it would be like, oh, okay, here comes the next Quantic Dream game. They show a trailer. Everyone's like, oh my god, this looks amazing! Exclusively PS Five. We bought them. Well, we'll see. I mean, who knows? Remember, they're they're holding their they're holding their belt, and we don't know what they're coming out with. It's yeah. not like Microsoft where they just tell us everything that's coming out in the next five years that's going to get canceled in three. <laughs> Hey, you, you, everybody gets mad at me for saying stuff like that, but they canceled fable. six games last console generation. They canceled my fable. fable. I told you, I, I told everybody that I buy a, a Xbox one when fable came out and then they canceled it. So you had a chance at my money. I had an Xbox in my hand. I wanted a, a thing, but because guess what? You didn't announce fable. I didn't keep it. So wow. who on you? Like, you know what? Like, so what's our, what's our third game? Oh yeah, we gotta do three games. <laughs> rant number seven. Rant number seven. We're just gonna keep rants. Let's see. Third game to take with you. Like, I mean, like Skyrim. 
Ah, uh, yeah, that's a good one. I, but I mean, without mods, though, I mean, like, uh, I mean, no, I could just play. I, I could just play OG Skyrim forever. I just go around collecting books and reading them. I've never played Skyrim. What? I own it on multiple consoles. Guess what I'm doing. It. Guess what I'm doing when we get off of here, Daryl. What's that? Playing Skyrim? No, oh, Daryl just screwed himself because oh, someone gonna, might donate. You're gonna pledge? <laughs> I'm gonna pledge and make you play Skyrim. Uh, well, I mean, see, I never played Skyrim because all the friggin' nerds. I was like, oh, I'm Skyrim, oh, I'm Skyrim, oh. and then it's like, okay, it, what's so great about Skyrim? The mods. I'm like, ugh. Oh, I perfect game. You know, it just came out, so it's great. You know, great experience. Death Stranding, because when you're running, it's just a mesh interp- It's the exact same thing of real life that he'd be doing running, right, away from running, the running away from the government. Because it's it's you're just a constantly walking in, in directions without a little, with your government slightly telling you what to do, but you believe that you're not doing it for your government because you're an independent person. There you go. There you go. That's running to America to restore America. All Maybe right. that's what he's doing. <laughs> May, I mean, one can only hope that CJ was coming to America. All right, so what we've got, we've got OG Resident Evil 2, we've got Hyrule Warriors, we've got Death Stranding. So now we got to give him an Xbox game because none of those are Xbox games. Well, that's get, a Skyrim. Uh, well, uh, they, well I mean, a, if you got it, if you got to do an Xbox game, I guess Skyrim counts. And, Pull out we three. Gotta, uh, we got to give him a good game. <laughs> and at least, or in the in the the great eyes of Microsoft, you give them half of a good game. We're gonna give them Halo Master Chief Collection because at least the first three games were good. Oh, well, here's the those are, aren't those janky and broken though? If you don't have the uh, the patch version, because basically what it does is deletes the the original game content and then puts the uh, the new version on there. If you put the base disc in right now to a to an Xbox, knocking it to the internet. It's only going to put the first two games on there. I think you're missing the multiplayer for most of them. And yeah, but it doesn't it have online. Broken. That's what I'm saying. Does it, does it include Reach or like three no, or any no, of that? No. I, Not yet. So here's what? the thing. Well, no, but it does include it now. Like I have it on my PC and okay, I. Like, but you're, you're, the, you're, what I'm saying is if you put that game in, put the disc in yeah. to a console not connected to the internet, you only have half the content on there. It's so not, you're paying $60 um, for two games and that's it? You know what I mean? And they're, the they're broken. You don't have split screen in the multiplayer. You're missing tons what of content. I'm gonna, so here's what happened. A couple years ago, we did a mountains trip, right? We go all the way up to the mountains. Of, I can't remember if it was Tennessee, North Carolina, Virginia, somewhere in there. We're, we're in the mountains. And we get this freaking beautiful, huge cabin with five bedrooms, um, a game room, all this crazy stuff, right? I bring but my no ex- internet, obviously. No internet, of course not. Yeah, you're on the top of the mountains. Yeah. I bring my Xbox and I bring Master Chief Collection and four controllers. And I'm like, that's all we need. Freaking Halo <laughs> split screen, me and my kids and the, and the other people's kids, we're all going to play. I put it in, it installs, and it's it literally, you cannot do split screen. You can't do split screen multiplayer. You you have to have accounts like to do the two split screen. I mean, dude, it was such a thing. We tried a hotspot <laughs> on our cell phones and it wasn't strong oh, enough. Oh my gosh. And but what happened was this as soon as we hit the hotspot and clicked update, because we were trying to get it to just update. Oh, something, it just installs it's everything. Like, it was like a I don't know. I may I might be making this up. It's like a 90 gig update or something like that. It del- oh, no. it deletes the oh, base it's- game and replaces it with the fixed version. Oh, yeah, it's like when I installed it on, like, I was trying to, like, because I, I downloaded it on Steam, right, to play with my buddy. Cause it was on sale, and I'm like, I, I really miss the old Halo games when they were good. And uh, I sit there, and I'm, I go, and I install it. I'm like, oh, dude, it's done. Let's play. He's like, it's not done. I'm like, what the hell are you talking about? He's like, no, you got to install every game. I'm like, no, but I, heard, I just pushed install. It shows me all the games. It's all here. He's like, no, what you have to do is try to launch every game and then it adds it to the library to download. Yep. I'm like, what? And he's like, and then you have to do that to launch every ar- multiplayer version of every single game. And I'm like, you're kidding me, right? Like, this is this is not a real thing. And he's like, yeah, that's exactly how it works. I'm like, wow, okay. So then, yeah, like 50 or 60 gigs later or whatever it was, you know, it's then great. I can finally play cooperative on Master Chief Collection One, and I'm like, yep. I'm like, I don't like. So it, was telling no- me- it was a novel thing they were trying to do, but it just did not work out right. And I guess because they were going between three generations, 
and code and all that bull crap. Like that's one that they should just kept. Three generations. Yeah, you got OG Xbox. You got uh, oh, because it's on Xbox One, right? Yeah, that's 360 why. and Xbox One. Yeah, yeah, I know it's 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 wild, but that was one of those. That one really. That one frustrated me because I had already went through two Xbox Ones, like not working correctly. And then when I get to a place to um, solely counting on this experience, it didn't work. I was so I was a little so are bitter. We, so, so when we're counting this, we're, we're we're having this conversation because he has no internet, right? So we've determined. So he's just, he doesn't even get the full game. So we can't count that. Then. No, we can't count that one unless he just oh, wants to play gosh. a stilted, butchered version of it. I mean, you <laughs> so, so Halo One campaign, Halo Two campaign would be there. Halo Three campaign, I believe, is also on the disc. I can't remember. It'd just be broken. No, the multiplayer is broken. Well, yeah, 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 the game's broken, but it's all the multiplayer stuff. But the problem is, those games were so contingent on that multiplayer and the split screen capabilities of the multiplayer. But he's by himself. He's running from the government. But I mean, that is a way to win over trust. Is to play those multiplayer with people. Yeah. If he has to, like, he might have to beat people at Halo matches to like earn a sandwich. So I mean. <laughs> I mean, that, this is about survival here. <laughs> yeah, I know. So he's got to have. So, so that's obviously not going to work. The only problem is like what I, I just don't. I don't know. You got like if we have to pick an Xbox game, it's just I think I, that's I, the best one to pick. I, I, I'm good. With I, it. I, I still think that's the best to pick. No, I just, gears, to, a gears of War collection, I would say. But there's not yeah, a but collection. There's no such thing. There's no such yeah. thing. There's supposed to be a Marcus Fans collection coming. Wait, I thought there was a Gears collection. No, 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 no. no. They get, had there's there's if you get Game Pass, all the gears are there. Yep. That's that's about as big of the collection you get right yeah. now. They, they did a Ultimate Edition of Gears One. That's it. Yeah, so games, I guess though. Ma- Master Chief Collection. It is, I guess. There you go. Done. Yep. yep there you go. Actually, what we're going to do sure, is, is if you can of- before you run away, just 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 you know maybe that's what it is. We figured it out, Daryl. So what he's going to do. Is because he's running from the government, right? Yep. He's gonna hook up the Xbox to update for Halo in yeah. a like public library. That's gonna lure the government there to distract them, and he's gonna leave the Xbox there, and then be obviously he's got the superior system, the PlayStation, with him. <laughs> so then that way there, he leaves the Xbox. They're like, "Oh, that's him, achievement hunting, downloading." He's there. He's getting Halo. Let's go get him, boys. And then they come in. They just see an Xbox. And because it takes so long to download, because he's got public internet from the library, he's he's Australia skated away. That. Yeah, yeah, he's skated away. He's got himself the PlayStation to can still play games with, and now he's the the Xbox has done its job and evaded the government. <laughs> done. That like sounds, I mean, that sounds like it works. Yeah, that sounds like, like it works. It. Yeah, yeah, that works. Okay, we solved the problem. CJ, we're we're go. hoping for you. you just remember, yep. just. Go update at a public library or, you know, <laughs> wherever you can in Australia. There you go. All right. Let's see where we're at. So Gaz writes in with the final question of the night. He says, Naughty Dog are currently working on their online multiplayer factions game. But would you like to see, or what, excuse me, what would you like to see from them as their next story-driven game? Uh, another Uncharted, a third Last of Us game, or something completely different. Would you want uh, them to try something different with their third person? Uh, excuse me. I, I can't read. I just, it's official. I can't read. Would you want them to try something different to their third person action adventure style as they have been recognized for for the past 15 years? Uh, Gaz, you did not write that incorrectly. I read it incorrectly. But yes. Do we want to see Naughty Dog stick with what they're good at? Or do we want to see them go balls to the wall, do something brand new? New. I want to see new, but I don't want to see them venture away from the third person. I want to see them attempt either a a new genre, and I think they I think with the story and telling and the puzzling they're doing, I would like to see. And I know a lot of people would hate me for saying this. I would like to see a full puzzle horror game. Go back to a full puzzle horror game, and I think they could pull it off. That'd be interesting. I, I because, think I want to get away from The Last of Us. Now, don't get me wrong. I love The Last of Us. Um, I like this idea of factions because from what I keep hearing, the rumors are it's going to be a little bit bigger and more layered. There's going to be a lot of story content because I love the idea with The Last of Us. And the thing that I hated about the idea of The Last of Us 2, although I haven't played it yet. I have it here. I just haven't played it yet. The Last of Us 2 
picks up with Ellie's story, I wanted them to just do different stories every game. That would be cool. I just think that like the idea of The Last of Us, it's like, oh, here's a different group. And this took place the yeah, day at the same before. time. Yeah. Yeah. You were, yeah. yeah. Yeah, that was one of the things I love about Resident Evil Outbreak is is like the Outbreak files. You didn't get all of your main characters. You played random freaking nobodies from the Resident Evil universe. You know, one's a waitress, one's a, re- a regular cop, one's a security guard. You know, like how cool would it be to just be like, oh, here's this world and it's totally messed up. And every game is just different characters. I mean, and that's one of the things I love about Resident Evil in general is there's the, it, the first several games, you know, you got different stories with different characters, you know? Oh, exactly. So, so it, I think, that the, and it, maybe that's why I like that. Maybe that's just me, you know, putting my Resident Evil bias on something else. But for me, oh, I yeah, that's, that'd be a survival it. puzzle game. Yeah, it, it really would. Um, but personally, I would like to see them do something different. So they did the uh, lighthearted action romp with Uncharted. I think Uncharted is, is awesome. Uh, but I would love for someone else to take Uncharted from this from now on and, and do something different. Um, or or this is really, this is the way I think all the, the studios, once they have hit a, a hit or two on their hands, you, you break into teams and you have, yeah. you have like, here's your Uncharted team. All right? And so they're going to be working on an Uncharted game. And then you have your Last of Us team. They're going to work on a Last of Us game. And then you have the team that's doing the new thing. And then when very similar to how Call of Duty does their stuff when each studio is up to bat, yep. I've always thought that like the Call of Duty should have it to where like you have your futuristic warfare, your your modern day warfare, and your you know old you know, in the past you know World War One Two world warfare. I always think it should be split like that so that your people your 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 fans don't get burnt out on your offerings. Which I think they've got to that point where they're doing that now. The problem is I don't understand why they've switched to where the studio that was doing the most futuristic one is now doing the the one that's like World War II-ish. Right, right. And the one that was doing the World War II-ish is now doing the modern age. And the one that's doing the modern age is now doing back to the futuristic. And I'm like, I, I don't, I don't, I don't get it. Like. Yeah, it's it's, it's still been gotten weird over there, um, but you know, with uh, with Naughty Dog, I want to see them do something brand new. I, I again, I like I like what Corey's saying. It's keep the third person. I, I think that that's what they do best. I think that that's what that's the thing that attracts me to Sony games the most, aside from just the top tier quality. Is just that like the third person is my favorite style. So, but even if they went back and did a Jack game, you know, or a Crash game, like like something to. Because I don't know how many people <laughs> that work at Naughty Dog that just constantly want to do doom and gloom, you know, like, or that might be what they want. They might want to stick with that dire, depressing, like this game was an amazing story, but like, just, it's just, everything is awful. Well, I think Jack, bringing, bringing back Jack would be a good way to do that. Cause Jack was different, right? Jack was, it was a third person shooter. But like later on in the jet, like the first one was like, you know, Jack and Daxter was just like, you know, this lighthearted game. But then when you hit that, that those third games, like they started dealing with like, you know, him being fighting the corruption and stuff like that. Yeah. And they could actually play that into a lot more of a uh, older audience side of things and play that way and bring a lot more, you know, vibrancy to that. And I think that would be neat, too. Yeah, I think I think that would be awesome. And then because then you have three, you you got three different games in the mix that do three different things. Yeah. Exactly. How about you, Joe? Meh. <laughs> He's like, eh, screw Night Dog. Nobody no, knows. I, mean, dog. I would like to see them either do another third person action game, but maybe do maybe like tackle something different. Like I'm sick of like The Last of Us or anything with a gun. <laughs> maybe do like an espionage game. Or maybe t- maybe get the James Bond license and give it to Naughty Dog. Or or get the team behind Alpha Protocol and work with them to actually make it so Alpha Protocol actually had good shooting mechanics God, and then redo Alpha game. Protocol. The fucking game was great. Dude, so I know. Fucking that's one I've been sliding down my backlog for years, and I own it on multiple consoles. Like, that game was so good. It was just the mechanics that broke it, and I think if they... Like, I think doing that would be cool. Like, doing something like that, I think that would be a sweet game to do. 
Maybe they can figure out whatever. Maybe Naughty Dog can help figure out whatever the fuck happened to the Fear Effect remake that was supposed to happen that like totally fell off the face of the earth. Ooh, time splitters. I got that's that's being being, being remade right now. Um, uh, I, I've got Fear Effect Sedona. <laughs> it's pretty terrible. Yeah, it was like a dollar. Yeah, I, I actually think I bought it for the dollar. <laughs> Yeah, but they're supposed to be making the first game, remember, Daryl? And then, like, it's just like they, I've never, we haven't heard anything in years. Dude, I tell you what needs to happen. This is it. This is this. We can shut the show down with this one. Freaking the Naughty Dog needs to be the ones to remake Dino Crisis. For a I knew you were gonna say that as soon as I said Fear <laughs> Effect, I knew you were going right for Dino Crisis. <laughs> yes, that's what we need. I, I wouldn't be mad or like maybe Did let them make Ani Ani Musha. Ooh, there you go. I think, you know, I think if they made Dino Crisis and they just completely built it from the ground up and redid it, I think it would be an interest. I think they could do it. Oh, my God. Imagine because- Naughty. No, sorry. Go ahead. That was it. That, that was my end sentence. Oh. I just think it'd be cool. Imagine Naughty Dog making a Jurassic Park shooter. There you go. Well, that, that would be Dino Crisis. No, yeah. but like, like I want a Jurassic Park shooter. <laughs> You know, so you, I want a, you, you want a you want a game where you shoot dinosaurs like Dino Crisis. Yeah, but with Jurassic Park. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it just just put the Jurassic Park. You gotta yeah. you gotta have even more money behind it. Not only do you have the Sony oh. money, you gotta get the Universal money. So to, to make it. Here's so what needs to happen, right? Since Square Enix is renting out their studios, okay, like Crystal D, they need to be lending out their IPs. So you need to have Naughty Dog do the Parasite Eve remake. That would be cool. Oh, man. Now we're just... Now we're right, talking... Now, stop. Just stop. Just stop toying with my emotions. <laughs> and now we're talking action RPG. Dude. Oh. Can you imagine? Could you imagine like Naughty Dog spin on a game like that? Like, are you talking about dark and grim? Oh, Oof. man. Just imagine letting, like... And then give them the actual... Like, and then Sony would actually give them the time they need to actually finish it properly. Oh, I know. That would be flipping oh. amazing. So, but see, I don't know. I, I always get kind of like weird internally whenever I think about the big studios doing licensed properties. Well, that's always the thing. It's like it was like always the question you had: if you could have any studio redo a franchise from some other studio, like who would you do and the jumble? Like what kind of jumbling when you do around? And like that's always the thing. I, I think the sad thing is there's so many more studios that could take over properties from other companies that have been long forgotten and like do something with it. I'd let the Persona and, team make a Final Fantasy game. Oof. I would let Perso- I would let the Persona team well, the, the problem is I guess the Persona team is like a very different team but if they were going to take over any RPG let them do time uh, uh, Chrono Trigger. There you go. Or Chrono. even let the friggin' team that does uh, Octopath Traveler make that, let them make the next Final Fantasy game. Or the guys that made I, really, if I, if we could get Chrono Trigger done in the style of Res- in Final Fantasy VII remake, oh my go. god! Oh, now we're just really toying. Oh, okay, now we're getting all heartbroken. <laughs> That's not happen. We just stop. All of him a feels over here. No nah, man, there's just there's a handful of games that I just they need to come back. Oh shit! Naughty Dog can remaster and bring back Jade Cocoon. Now you know what? Here's a real big one. This is this is the one that maybe this is the reason why Zombie Ate My Neighbors is never coming because it's Naughty Dog making Zombie Ate My Neighbors 3D version <laughs> for the PS4. Zombies <laughs> Ate My Neighbors. <laughs> oh my fucking PS4 version of Zombies <laughs> Ate My Neighbors. They're like it's it's gone. What happened to it? So Neil like, Druckmann is your, li- is your limited uh, run still coming or like what? I don't, don't even know. know. I've got limited run games on order for like four months now. Still in here. Yeah, well they, yeah, they're they, backed they, up. They just hired Jerry Petty. Really? But the thing is, it's like, I'm just, for me, it's like the idea that if you look at it, it's, oh yeah, they have Twitch streams all the time, but like, it's, it's blows my mind with uh, everything going on with the, the zombies ate my neighbors, because like, if you think about it, they're doing a limited run, which means there's a physical copy of the version that they're obviously making. And it's like, okay, so what's happening with that now that, the game's not actually out. I don't know. What frustrates me is that I they keep releasing horror games and I keep having to buy them. I mean, that's never a problem, though. That's that's a good problem to have. Yeah, well, the bad thing is I'm buying them digital first because they don't come out physical. And then it's like, oh, now it's physical. Got to buy it, too. Oh, yeah. Now the, 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 yeah. So, all right, guys. We are approaching the two and a half hour 
March. Jeez. I know. We were there. And, and we and didn't even, even had, I think we should land we haven't, even had the, we haven't even had the final like Xbox Game Pass rant. And the, no, like, no. You know. So we're going to have to put a pin in that one. Oh, Corey, can we, you're gonna can have we to talk come about back. one thing? Can we can we talk about one thing? I just want to mention this because I think this is the perfect group of, of people to talk about. It's a short news story. I don't know if you saw the news. I mean, for all those who know, Far Cry Six came out. Okay, mm-hmm. and Far Cry, you know, they've got some balls over there in that studio. They may make the same game over and over again, and just you know add different things to it every time that make it somewhat new unique. This time they added something that really shook shook the world cockfighting which is cockfighting and (laughs) the idea that i i sat there and when they showed that first time and then the the best part was they did they actually put time and effort into it and i hear people talking about like where like this makes them feel of tekken they're like this is like the tekken (laughs) game we never had (laughs) like this is great and now PETA has officially come out of the, the the hole that they've been in wherever and i mean you know what all the power to, you know, I love my animals and stuff like that. And you should never hurt an animal. But digitally, I'm sorry. Like, you know, I, let, I'm let not going to let, let, let them fight. PETA sucks. Let them fight. Let them fight. But the idea that PETA's like now being a petition to try to get them to stop the cockfighting in Fire Square 6. Um, I, I mean, obviously, I heard, know your opinion on this, Daryl. Uh, Joe, what's your opinion on this whole <laughs> cockfighting thing that's in Far Cry 6? I mean, it's dumb. Like, who Whoa. cares? See a video game. Just let it happen. There we go. That's right. Let them fight. Done. There we go. That, that was my piece. There we go. Now, that's, that, that, that will end with cockfighting. <laughs> that's how it always should end. No. <laughs> that's, that's how every episode of Libro should end with cockfighting. <laughs> All right. Sounds like that should be in uh, the, the first the first stream of uh, the loop of, of is, Daryl's cockfighting stream is just, just just six straight hours of cockfighting. Oh my gosh, I would, dude! I should go buy that game just to start it off that way. Yeah, and then you should just do it where you just say in your title, just like have like Peter come shut me down. <laughs> like, come at me, Peter. Come at me, Peter. <laughs> Let's go, Brandon. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, uh, cockfight everybody all right uh definitely gonna have to have you back more often Corey. i think this is great oh, this, is, this was really good uh joe always a pleasure guys this is the loot bros cockfighting cast anytime that we're on <laughs> the cockcast <laughs> cock no cockfighting cast come on guys that's okay, a whole that's a whole cast. different show that's that that's a deep is that tier. a new is that gonna be a new patreon tier now that you guys are gonna have <laughs> just, to have the co- they just have the cockfighting. <laughs> yeah. It's the Waki Teriyaki tier. There you go. That's where we, yeah, we talk anime. <laughs> oh my gosh. That's oh hilarious. My you know what would be awesome is if like our Patreon did grow enough to where whenever we make these dumb jokes, people are like, hey, I'll pony up for that. <laughs> yeah, they go listen to the old episodes. They're like, well, this one time you like yeah. that voted the most yeah, episode. Yeah, you, yeah, let yeah. Them, you let them vote and you get all those like nostalgic people where one person puts it up and everyone's like, yeah, the heck's this said, guy talking about this cockfighting cock fighting podcast two years ago? So yeah, so I definitely appreciate you guys coming on here and let's, and then doing this. This is Loot Bros Podcast. Do check out our Patreon. We have new episodes up. We did a deep dive of twelve minutes, the old game pasturbation, and then we did a Super Loot Bros uh, episode where I did a little one on one interview with Kali. So I will be doing a little bit more of that and in the months to come and definitely have some Halloween themed. Ah, you say come. That's it. Loot Bros Podcast. We're out. Later, guys.